Okay, introduction. This model, this model is structured, ordered, interrelated, and consistent, which is the signs of a good model. This model explains geologic mysteries, for example, tectonics driving mechanism, Nastapoca Arc in Canada, Bermuda, hotspots in general, microcontinent of Zealandia, microcontinent of Greater Adria, the relative ages and ages of the Earth's layers, the mid-continent rift in North America, North America Mackenzie Dyke Swarm, gravity anomalies, magnetic anomalies, fault system interrelationships such as the New Madrid seismic zone and even the Theia impacts. This model explains all important chronologic geologic events. This model agrees with aspects of the current model and if not can explain how the current model came to be. This model is supported and initiated by the results of a five-year field study in Lower New York, USA and by an intense analysis of Google Earth. This model is verified and guided by many amazing fractals in North America and around the world. Google Earth, an intense analysis, reveals the following about land masses. There are related geologic structures, some of which have broken up. There were seven land masses or structures. One has actually disappeared into the Earth. They are presently attracted to a zone between India and Russia. It's like a new supercontinent. They show details of internal stress and flow-like movement. They show details from amazing fractals within them, such as history of internal stress and flow-like movement, history of high-energy tectonic geologic events, and faults that are based on the character of the fractals. Okay, Google Earth findings. They're shown in the following. William Pagano's January 2019 YouTube video titled Plate Tectonics Unraveling the Truth on the William Pagano channel. Refined and in much greater detail in the PDFs found in the link below. To see all the PDFs be signed into a Google Drive account, otherwise you're only going to see some of them and it won't make much sense. The above link is also found at the end of the YouTube video description. Part 1 of this presentation, Geochronology, from 2.5 billion years ago, 2.5 BYA to today. The findings are guided and refined by fractals and structures found on Google Earth every step of the way. The findings are guided and refined by published geologic literature every step of the way. Okay, this presentation right here, part 1b, geochronology, the Cambrian era to the present, from 541 million years ago, MY8, to the present. The findings are guided and refined by fractals and structures found on Google Earth every step of the way. The findings are also guided and refined by published geologic literature every step of the way. Okay, so what we have here is a uh, fractal of North America. This fractal is located northwest of the uh, fractal that had like 21 refolds, which is really the seven of them three times going around the globe. Um, all in Nova Scotia, and uh, this is um, in time sequence after that one, so it goes in a counterclockwise direction of time, time sequence. So that's why this one's to the north and west. And uh, furthest in the um, opposite direction was that fractal showing um, Rodinia releasing the moon. So it goes from that to that uh, chain structure um, on Earth that was um, trying to maintain equilibrium about the uh, equatorial spin axis. And it was showing longitudinal and lateral oscillations. So now the uh, train, so to speak, has officially derailed, and these refolds are not as bonded, and they're more independent, and they're going to start migrating. Now the uh, momentum is going uh, counterclockwise. Everything's going towards the, uh, the south, rotating counterclockwise, and there's going to be some relaxation longitudinally because everything was compressed in the last stage. So keep in mind there's this Cambrian explosion of life at this time, and that likely is related to this tectonic regime. Hard to prove, but it's coincidental that, um, may not be so coincidental that, you know, everything's changed. The whole regime has changed, as I discussed with um, first the refolds trying to maintain equilibrium, equilibrium about the um, equatorial spin axis, and now they're independent, and they're moving around, and they're going to um, try to get into that um, suture zone and access to the suture zone. So let me read these text boxes. Reminder, these fractals of Earth's geochronological events are during and just after high energy tectonic events that guide this model every step of the way. 
Very important. Can't stress that enough. That's uh, you see that continuing, and it's really going to show here coming up. Uh, so this is um, 550 to 525 million years ago. This fractal. I'm estimating about 530 because that's when the um, this is just after the locking mechanisms are fully released and the chain of refolds had derailed. So there's a whole different dynamic here. Um, so there's that uh, snapback from everything's under a time warp. And now that there's the uh, opportunity, more independence to these refolds, I believe you can get the full compression because we saw those other fractals from the uh, 21 sequence of 21 refolds. It showed uh, some compression to the asteroid uh, impact. Now this asteroid impact fractal is in full compression because I think it's allowed to get into that full compression. And um, just like it'll be allowed to snap back and start rotating heavily counterclockwise. So the reason it's rotating counterclockwise is because the asteroid hit left of the center line, hit about here or whatever that I'm highlighting, and uh, started this um, counterclockwise rotation, at least in the long term. And you'll see why. I mean, it's, again, it's like a time warp. First you get these oscillations, like the shock from the uh, asteroid impact, and then you get the, um, finally, the asteroid is able to uh, rotate this this North America refold counterclockwise. So if we take a look at uh, this fractal here, looks like um, future Florida here where I pointed out, that's like the um, Florida plateau formed about 530 million years ago. So this very, very well might be right around that time. And you see actually a bunch of Floridas. They're just a little bit... Um, bigger and everything and even this one it, it's very primitive looking florida shapes you can see like an internal where i'm highlighting now there's like an internal uh compressional feature here perhaps it went here then snapped back a little bit to some degree to the uh outside red line and the energy probably caused these subdivisions as it um compressed and then snapped back to some degree uh, there's like a shearing on the front end of the energy because the asteroid's coming in that direction of the blue arrow. At least the energy from it, it's moving this way. So now that this refold is more independent, less bonded to the other ones, there's a relaxation longitudinally. Um, there's going to be a counterclockwise action from the chain anyway, even though these guys are independent. It was headed that way. So now there's that ability to fully compress and that ability to decompress and start rotating heavily. You'll see that rotation in the next slide. Okay, this is a, uh, another fractal of the North America refold. This one is um, just north of Caledonia, Nova Scotia, and it's in North America, and that's where the action was. So I think that's why you're going to be seeing more North America fractals in particular. So this one, uh, like I was saying, is now free to rotate heavily counterclockwise. And the whole chain is doing that too, but this is just showing North America. So you can see these arrows showing the rotation that I'm circling now. And there's even, um, it's even swinging laterally to the right where I'm circling this arrow here. So it's about 500 to 475 million years ago. And uh, you can see the impact fractal in blue. It has not rotated counterclockwise yet. It does that suddenly later. And you can see the first of the Great Lakes rotational signatures here. You can see like a primitive, if you look carefully, um, it trends northwest. There's like a, I'm going to highlight it now in red. It's like the Michigan Peninsula. Okay. It's going in this direction. So you can see that if you look carefully. You can also see like a little bit of a um, bulge of Florida forming here. And I'm highlighting now. Okay. We're going to go back to uh, talking about the chain structure again, which uh the individual elements of the chain structure of refolds is now independent as compared to before. And I guess uh, this is due to um, severe longitudinal oscillation and severe lateral oscillation. The bonds or whatever it is attracting the uh, individual refolds have now been uh, dissipated and things are going to start to, the whole chain now is swinging laterally to the uh, to the south, south of the equatorial spin axis. So remember this diagram here that I'm drawing the arrow to. The bottom of this is about 550 million years ago. 
the green axis is the equatorial spin axis. So now um, things are, are gearing up, as you can see from the dynamic here, to go in the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the counterclockwise direction to the right south of the equatorial spin axis 475 million years ago. And again, the uh, just to repeat this Pan-African orogeny, mountain building event was between 650 and 500 million years ago. That's actually straddling the Cambrian and the Precambrian. And uh, I'm saying they're basically the whole dynamic, the resulting compressional release of the interlocking mechanism and the dynamic associated with the Canadian impact resulted in the Pan-African orogeny, which appears to show internal refold reactions. It's uh, one of the largest orogenies between the Pan-African orogeny and the Grenville orogeny. Okay, some, uh, before I get into the details below on this uh, diagram here, there's a supercontinent of Gondwandia starting to form, according to the geologic literature, 550. It basically existed 550 to 180 million years ago. And uh, Taconic orogeny specifically is, is more here in this diagram, beginning about 480 million years ago and going to about 430 million years ago. Uh, as defined by the Iapetus Ocean closing. Okay, as we look at the uh, diagram below, the refolds from top to bottom of the chain, Southeast Asia at the top, Russia, North America, Africa, South America, Antarctica, Australia, India, combined refold, and continent A. Okay, as the uh, supercontinent of Gondwanda forms, according to the geologic literature, I wrote here, Gondwanda, the start of Gondwanda is marked by the rapid shift in the Antarctica-Australia-India combined refold at approximately 550 million years ago. That is this refold here. So you can see in the uh, longitudinal direction, things have relaxed as you compare it to the top diagram in the fractal. I wrote here, there is now longitudinal relaxation about the spin axis and the lateral counterclockwise rotation continues about the spin axis. However, longitudinal tightening is starting, starting again as the refold arms develop and the chain experiences attraction to the anchor zone. I'll talk more in detail about that as, in a minute. Okay, East Gondwanda and West Gondwanda have, have collided. So um, the collision zone is pointed out right here. The uh, Adamaster Ocean closed, as per geologic literature. If you look on the previous slide, you'll see that Adamaster Ocean labeled. I should clarify that the Adamaster Ocean is labeled in the previous presentation, part 1A, toward the end of it. Okay, as previously discussed, the Florida Plateau formed about 530 million years ago, as per geologic literature. Seen in the fractal, it is uh, an edge of a refold subdivision. It's pointed out over here. The North America refold is beginning to rotate, as you can see, around the Canadian impact site. Chain rotation is indicated by the black arrow shown. See the black arrow going counterclockwise. Uh, as per my model, there is minor deformation of the edge of South America, later the site of Budin's launching into the Caribbean Sea, which I'll get into later. That's right here. The Taconic Orogeny and the Appalachian Mountains have began at 480 million years ago as the Iapetus Ocean closes as per geologic literature. So here's North America. East Coast is... Uh, basically shown in this area. And I uh, also label the Iapetus Ocean here. That's, um, arrows are shown where that is. You can see how it's closed. Okay, I labeled um, Baltica here, and I labeled Avalonia here. You can see where they are. Now, uh, beginning as a land bridge, I'm reading this right here, beginning as a land bridge, land mass above the Africa arm and moving in the direction of the growth of the arm. As per geologic literature, Avalonia moved closer to Baltica and North America at 488 million years ago. 
this is that Africa arm I'm talking about. So there's this uh, dynamic going on here that I'll explain. An attraction towards a certain zone. So here's the Southeast Asia refold I'm highlighting. The arm is the uh, arm here that's attached to the inner earth. And now there's this um, dynamic going on. I'm going to this text box here. Upper crust, brittle crust failure exists from the Southeast Asia arm anchor movement. That severe movement when uh, Africa twerked, as I called it, to the uh, to the right and everything went flying. And um, Southeast Asia refold still anchored on its south arm, but it went flying pretty fast, so it must have damaged the upper brittle crust. And um, again, what I'm saying here is uh, upper brittle failure from the Southeast Asia arm anchor movement and from the rapid movement of the North America refold caused the arm of the Africa refold to develop and move toward the upper crust failure zone. So this is, a, again, this is the arm of Africa here. Okay, I should clarify in general that if there's something pointed out in an arrow that's not right on one of these uh, refolds, it's probably talking about uh, like a microcontinent, one of like a shard of glass that's floating on these boats, which, and the boats are the uh, refold structures. So now that there's oceans especially, there's a lot of uh, new land created and these new shards of glass that are kind of busted up in the brittle zone as things are moving around below the ductile refolds of the boats and they're moving around and shifting these shards of glass, so to speak. So I'm basically, I'm keeping this diagram here. It's getting further away in time. You know, it's about 550 at the end, like I said, but it's, this is more of just a reference of comparison. To see how things have changed because um, basically things are changing now, but it's, it's just a slow, uh, slow thing, relatively slow thing going on now where the chain is, is moving to the right and the in individual refolds are more independent. They start separating and all that. But uh, to see the difference, basically, I'm just leaving this top diagram in. I didn't show the equatorial spin axis below, but uh, it would basically be um, the center, center left-ish of uh, the diagram below. So now we're up to about 430 to 420 million years ago. Uh, again, still in the, um, well, the Taconic orogeny, when the Iapetus Ocean closed, is coming to an end because it ended about 430 million years ago, 480 to 430. The, um, we're still in the uh, formation of the supercontinent of Gondwanda. That's from 550. Its existence is from 550 to 180 million years ago. Uh, again, the, that black arrow is shown on this diagram, which is basically the... Uh, attraction direction of these individual refolds towards the suture zone where the um, upper crust had been broken as I explained in the previous slide. So now we can get into the details here. Um, the Iapetus Ocean closed at 430 million years ago in North America and 420 million years ago at the African arm as per geologic literature. Well, they don't refer to the Africa arm, of course, in geologic literature, but that's my model. So you see the arrows here and here, closing of the, of the Iapetus Ocean. According to the geologic literature, North and South China split from Gondwanda and went north as per geologic literature. So that's what's going on here. Everything's uh, matching geologic literature. This, this model is. Okay, you can see the, um, looks, looks like compression here because of this driving, the arm moving and everything, arm of Africa moving. The Northern Appalachians formed 450 million years ago as per geologic literature. Uh, again, you see the East and West Gondwanda collision zone here. That arm, another arm is uh, attracted to that zone. These arms are forming now. So this is the arm of uh, what later became India here that I'm highlighting. So back over here, the, uh, there is now longitudinal tightening about the spin axis and lateral counterclockwise rotation continues about the spin axis. I showed in the black arrow. So that tightening is due to those arms and everything getting attracted to that suture zone 
or the zone of broken crust, the access to the suture zone, or in the vicinity of the uh, Southeast Asia refold. Okay, now let this text box here I'm looking at. The Raic Ocean opened up behind Avalonia. You can see Avalonia on the previous slide where that was. That's um, in this area. So, so as per geologic literature, uh, Avalonia drifted along the advancing arm of the Africa refold. That's actually according to my model, but that's what I'm saying to match geologic literature with this closing of the Raic Ocean. Okay, the final text box here. The Taconic originally, which uh, existed between 480 to 430 million years ago, which is, uh, again, this is 430 to 420. That's when the Iapetus Ocean completely closes, as for geologic literature. Taconic orogeny phases are likely associated with refold movement and upper plates that are separated off the deeper refolds by shallow, brittle faulting. That's like the shards of glass that I was describing and the uh, deeper ductile refolds of the boats that are driving everything. Okay, so we're now at uh, about 410 million years ago. I referenced the um, previous diagram of 430 to 420 million years ago here as reference. Um, so see this current model here uh, around this time. It's actually uh, the late Permian 255 million years ago, but for discussion purposes, it's valid here. What I'll read is uh, what it says here. Samaria, a string of microcontinents or terrains rifted off Gondwanda, which is Gondwanda, and headed towards Laurasia from approximately 300 million years ago to 270 million years ago. The Neotethys Ocean opened up while the Paleotethys closed. Here's the Paleotethys Ocean. There's the Tethys Ocean here. Um, as per my model, these events are likely associated with the shifting and growing of deep ductile refold arms. These arms move the younger microcontinents and terrains above them, and these younger land masses formed as land bridges. I'll read this text box here. Over time, more recently formed brittle microcontinents, terrains, and microplates contributed more to tectonic events. However, the predominant mechanism remains, remained Suction attraction to the anchor zone at the inner earth through the access zones at damaged oceanic crust or crusts at this point, we'll say, due to distortion, stretching, and rotation of the ductile anchor suture zone that's connected to, uh, that ductile anchor is connected to the Southeast Asia refold. The ductile anchor of the Southeast Asia refold anchored with two arms and re-anchored with one arm to the equatorial spin axis at the inner earth. That's been talked about before. So there still is one arm there. Access to the highly attractive anchor location is through brittle oceanic crust failure zones beneath the refold structures. Okay, so um, again, we're during the time of Gondwanda, according to geologic literature, and we're contributing, hasn't officially formed yet, but Pangea is coming up. So I noted the details here, the Acadian orogeny According to geologic literature, 416 to 359 million years ago, from New York, USA to Newfoundland, um, Canada. So that's more in the northern area here as opposed to before we had action down this way. Um, and I'm saying as sequential mountain building events in North America move in the direction of the Africa refold arm, as this Africa refold arm is getting bigger, the um, Compression area is changing, it's migrating to the north. And again, you see the uh, East Gondwana and West Gondwana collision zone in this area, also due to an arm driving up against the land. Okay, on this slide, um, I just want to clarify something here. This um, thing here with the globe, once again. Uh, so, it says here, according to geologic literature, this is, uh, again, late Permian 255 million years ago. It's becoming more valid now as we're at 300 million years ago. Um, it says the string of microcontinents or terrains rifted off Gondwanda and headed towards Laurasia. Well, this is Laurasia, and Gondwanda is this massive land here. So what's going on? Uh, it says the 
neotethes opened up while the paleotethes closed. So the paleotethes is here and the neotethes is really here. So this opened up as that closed, which implies like a drifting of these microcontinents because uh, this, the paleo is going to close and this will, the neo will open as things move this way. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and that does, in fact, um, mimic how uh, I'm saying that down below in my model, the arms are moving, which is driving the uh, movement of these microcontinents as, um, you know, land bridges, they're younger land above these lower foundational refolds, the ductal refolds below. So as they move in this direction, as I'm putting the arrow here, uh, this will, it'll open up the Tethys Ocean behind it and it'll close the uh, Paleo Tethys, which is up here to the north. So here's that uh, paragraph again, basically the microcontinents and all the brittle shards of glass are getting more critical in the uh, regime of uh, tectonics, which are kind of more plate tectonics at this point, but still driven by the lower ductal refold structures, which are more independent now and they're uh, moving in a counterclockwise direction as you'll see below. So in this diagram I have, um, I don't have the previous one at 410, I got 430 to 420, but the difference is negligible and um, it's more for comparison reasons for this one here, which I'll discuss now. Again, we're um, in the supercontinent of Gondwana phase 550 to 180 million years ago. Formation of Pangaea is actually starting here. Uh, you can see the C shape is forming. So as per geologic literature, Pangaea was fully assembled by 335 million years ago and maintained relative, it was basically relatively stable as a supercontinent until 200 to 180, 175 million years ago. Um, I'll just discuss where the uh, refolds are. This is the Southeast Asia refold here, Russia refold, North America refold, Africa refold, the arm of Africa, South America, continent A, Look at the big difference here. And this is uh, Antarctica, Australia, what became India, refold, combined refold. Okay, now to discuss these uh, text boxes here. The Ural Mountains began forming as per geologic literature. They're over here. And you can see North America button up against the Russia refold. There's probably some uh, you know, compression going on there. The Raic Ocean completely closed after 350 million years ago as per geological literature. This was driven by Africa pushing into North America. So you can see that going on there. Now that you know North America is driving off of, of Africa. The Anti-Atlas Mountains began forming in the Alleghenian, during the Alleghenian Orogeny at 325 million years ago per geological literature. So they're right here. Again, that push off probably figures in that dynamic, the push off of uh, North America. Africa shifted at about 350 million years ago and pushed out the Budins from South America. That's purely my model. Okay, um, the continent A refold must have shifted at, a, at about 350 million years ago. That's my model too. It's, uh, this is not referenced in any geologic literature. It's over here at the bottom. The southernmost Appalachian Mountains formed and the Ouachita Mountains began forming at about 325 to 300 million years ago, respectively, as per geologic literature. So that's over here, probably related to that uh, push-off dynamic again. Southern Appalachian Mountains formed at about 350 million years ago, as per geologic literature. So that's uh, in that area. So the southernmost versus the southern, just a little clarification there. South America moved to the north and collided with North America at about 350 million years ago as per geologic literature. Really, according to my model, this is the result of the collision of the launched Budins from South America. So there's South America there. These Budins got launched off from over here. All right, uh, Greater Adria, landmass and land bridge is likely forming. 
It broke off what became Northern Africa at about 240 million years ago as per geologic literature. That's one of those shards of glass that uh, I was talking about that's riding on these um, boats that are below the refold structures. So that's right in this area. Must have fallen off the, um, or was associated with the arm of Africa, which formed the land bridge in that area. Okay, one more thing. The Antarctica, Australia, India, et cetera, combined refold continent moved at about 350 million years ago as per geologic literature. So that you can see, I mean, that's pretty dramatic from the last one. Okay, you see the same uh, diagram here, the late Permian uh, regarding Samaria and drifting continents, microcontinents. And uh, again, this um, 430 to 420 million year old diagram is here. And uh, you know, we're up to 200 million years ago just to see the, the big difference here between the two. Between this one, which we're going to discuss now, and the 430, 420 above. So we're still um, just barely within the supercontinent of Gondwanda, according to geologic literature, 550 to 180. Formation of Pangaea has... Uh, we're right in the heart of that now. Uh, as per geologic literature, reading here in the blue, Pangaea rotated a little by the Triassic 251 million years ago, just before this. This drawing is just prior to the breakup at 200 million years ago to 280 million years ago, as per geologic literature. So I'll just, uh, again, talk about where the refolds are. This is Southeast Asia. This is Russia refold, North America refold. Africa refold, arm of Africa refold. There's a little arm forming. I'll talk about that. Um, Antarctica, Australia, what became India refold here. Continent A refold, which is now gone into the toward the middle of the earth. Uh, this is South America here. Okay, um, now let's discuss these text boxes. The Ural Mountains formed, oh, I'm sorry, uh, they stopped forming 195 million years ago as per geologic literature. That's in this area. Um, that's just a, a fact. I guess if you really look at this, um, you can see why maybe because uh, the arm over here has come down, so there's some tension there, no more mountain building. See versus uh, the arm of, of Russia on the, the left side has changed versus um, what you see on the top diagram. So maybe that um, tension's gone. That's just, just speculating here. Okay, so going through this again on the bottom here. The Florida Peninsula Arch began forming as per geologic literature. Right here. I mean, now that there's some leeway, there's some ocean developing between Africa and North America. That's definitely uh, feasible there. Uh, Zealandia land bridge is forming. That's right here. We'll get into more detail later. This is a huge land bridge forming between the uh, the arm of continent A refold and the arm of um, what became India later. Uh, continent A settled into position up against the adjacent Antarctica, Australia, India, etc. refold. They actually share a border here. That's in, engraved into both of them, you'll see. Um, let's see. The Atlas Mountains formed between 200 and 174 million years ago as per geologic literature. As per this model, these mountains appear to be related to the formation of Budins that rotated counterclockwise and jammed up at the uh, sheared edge of the Africa refold. You'll see a more detailed diagram later. Something to keep in mind there. So that's over here. Uh, the Southeast Asia refold rotated slightly, but not enough to initiate the breakup of Pangaea. So that's going to be the driver for the later official breakup of Pangaea. Every time this arm of Africa moves, it affects uh, the movement of Southeast Asia refold here. And that drives tectonics at this point. 
Okay, the little arm of Africa now grew and greater Adria land, land bridges, land masses broke off at about 240 million years ago as per geologic literature. So you see that. So now there's another little arm there developing and um, greater Adria microcontinent broke off um, at 240 million years ago. It didn't know about that little arm there, but geologic literature claims it uh, at 240 million years ago, this occurred. Okay. The land arm of the Africa refold grew somewhat, but not enough to rotate and destabilize Southeast Asia refold or its anchor to the inner earth or initiate the breakup of Pangaea, which is what I said before. Okay, on this slide, we're gonna compare my model that I've developed up to this point, my model of Pangaea versus the uh, published geologic literature model, which is shown here. Okay. Uh, just reading the text box. As the chain of refolds oscillated counterclockwise after 550 million years ago, and up to this point, we're at about uh, 200 million years ago or so. It's been that uh, uh, slow, but some, some pretty quick changes, but it's all just rotating laterally to the right, counterclockwise direction, to the right, which is to the south of the uh, equatorial spin axis, more or less. Uh, so anyway, the damaged oceanic crust are just crossed above the anchor zone to the inner earth, the crustal area, the uh, ductal area, was no longer as shielded from the adjacent refolds above and allowed the six independent refold structures, aside from Southeast Asia, to be attracted to the anchor zone at the inner earth, this counterclockwise system of black arrows, as you can see below, thus forming Pangaea and contributing to its breakup. So you see the um, my diagram here with the um, system of rotation counterclockwise is shown by the black arrows. And uh, what I'm saying basically is now that things are coming out laterally, they're sort of, they can feel that attraction zone over by the Southeast Asia refold where the uh, brittle zone has become broken up and there's that access to the uh, attraction at the inner earth in which the arm is is uh, sutured to. and that. That's this arm right here on the Southeast Asia refold where I'm highlighting now. And as this um, Africa refold arm develops this way, it's gonna cause the Southeast Asia refold to rotate clockwise. Everything's going counterclockwise, but this is going clockwise. So now you have that classic C shape that uh, is talked about in literature so much, the uh, Pangaea C, C shape. You can see that uh, here. And of course, in my model, as things come out laterally, like I said, form that classic C shape. Uh, incidentally, above, I rotated my model a little bit, very hard to see, but it's even more similar. These two are even more similar at this point. And again, if all the, um, my model just shows the, the refolds, the ductal refolds. If I were to show, and God knows where exactly they are, all the um, surficial land masses and land bridges and everything that, uh, later became or are the um, microcontinents and shards of glass and everything being shoved around from the uh, these boats below, they call them the boats, the ductile refold structures. If I were to show them, it would probably look even more similar. And uh, again, the only difference between these two diagrams really is that I have this continent A, which I'm highlighting now, which is here. And uh, the existing geologic model doesn't know anything about continent A. So I'll discuss uh, continent A coming up. It's good to know um, the story with it and everything. It's just another um, refold that has a, uh, an arm to it that's attracted to the zone. The other one being uh, what became India later. And then there's Africa, like I said, and there's even the little arm of Africa now. So if you look at the uh, diagram to the right, it's just showing the dynamics. Um, this is actually today showing a diagram of the uh, Earth, the refolds today, you know, some of them have been broken up and everything, but the um, forces dynamic is still the same. This continent A is right here. Um, at least a, a footprint of it is now um, inside the inner Earth. It moved in the direction of the arrow shown because this dashed pink line here is the suture that goes down to where the equatorial spin axis is. 
and it is um you know below in, in the brittle rain, uh, zone on the top when this movement occurs whether it relaxes or moves it's going to move the southeast asia around, uh refold around and it's going to bust up uh more crust and force more attraction and uh expose new areas such as here to access that area as and that access is shown in these red arrows and all this one's a little bit independent this happened like 105 110 million years ago we'll talk about later but this attraction zone here is what i was just discussing the broken uh brittle zone okay the next three slides are uh, continent a which is the um, refold that ended up going into the Mariana Trench on its way towards the uh, suture zone where the arm of the Southeast Asia refold attached to the inner earth at the equatorial spin axis. So that's the ultimate goal of all these um, landforms at this point, all these refolds. Uh, 180 million years ago is basically where we're at right now. I just have to go off on a tangent up to about 42 million years ago when Continent A entered the Mariana Trench. Uh, in the journey, which I'll describe in a bit, uh, where I'm putting the uh, purple highlight now, you see that red outline? That's like a footprint of Continent A. There is a resting spot there. And there's another footprint that looks like um, what I show here to the lower left on the insert there. Uh, Continent A is the uh, where I just put the purple highlight there. It's that refold, and it's uh, you'll see more detail on the next uh, slide or whatever. Um, there's different parts to it and everything that uh, are expressed through its its movement, how these parts deform and everything. But there's actually uh, on Google Earth you can see that footprint also between Antarctica and South America. The footprint representing like a long-term resting zone. Okay, if you look at this. Um, Beautiful fractal in Maine, USA that I'm circling in the upper left. Okay, uh, this was like 105, 110 million years ago. But there's, um, again, stopping positions. The um, stopping positions mark uh, locations of things like this uh, continent A refold that's frozen in time because it's sat there for a while. So this continent A is where I'm highlighting at the bottom of that insert. See that? And the blue arrow here is... Um, the first path that it took at about 180 million years ago. And I'm highlighting that path in red now in the, uh, the Google Earth diagram here. See that on the bottom, that path one? So we're looking at a different angle there. So it zipped out for a reason. It may have been the initiator of the uh, breakup of Pangaea basically at 180 million years ago. Or it could have been the arm of the Africa refold that was extending. And then the, it um, by extending, it pulled the Southeast Asia refold with it and that arm of the uh, Southeast Asia refold that anchored to the inner earth started breaking up the brittle crust and then that provided access to that suture and um, initiated like a excitement of all the refolds and everything. So what started what? I'm not sure. Uh, let's assume it's continent A. Actually, I'm going to check that. I'm going to assume it is the arm of Africa because that moved and then it moved the uh, Southeast Asia refold and that really um, as you'll see there was like a battle in two directions over which way continent A was going to go and the one that won out is what I just described that first path so it takes a roundabout path to get into the Mariana Trench which is an access zone to the suture at the inner earth so the next step is um, you can see it in, in this lower left diagram barely over here it takes like a almost a reverse there so that's number two here I'm highlighting. Um, now it's hard to see because the ocean's the same color, but that goes back there. And um, then it's gonna go uh, to three, which is in green that I'm, I'm now highlighting. It's gonna go in that direction up to the resting uh, location that you see that's highlighted in the red outline right here that I'm checking inside that. So you see this in greater detail on uh, the next slide, I believe, but here is the, uh, the third path. So then it's here. Here's that resting position. I'm looking at, at the lower left insert. And I put different, um, I divided into parts that I labeled. And you can see how those parts 
undergo changes as the uh, refold moves in this pathway from one, two to three. So I think eventually, um, so continent A is in this resting spot. Eventually it goes into the Mariana Trench and um, it made the, the shape of the Mariana Trench. See the Mariana Trench here is up at the, uh, I'm highlighting now, see that? All right, and look at the, uh, the shape here. I'm highlighting there, it's the same shape. So that's the way um, it went in. Now there's like a, uh, just to see what's on this diagram here, there's a compacted zone in white here that I'm putting a check by. And there's this um, green zone. The green zone used to be attached to um, Australia. And there's actually, uh, where I'm circling now on that, uh, that, that part up there, that is blown up here. That's Papua New Guinea that is shown in the upper right. See that? So there's an SC structure there. And the red arrow indicates that um, it was under a lot of strain, really the red and green arrow, but the red arrow dominates and it shows that there was definitely a pulling from this uh, continent A migration. So once it was like light enough or whatever is what I'm thinking, it was able to get lifted off and uh, probably skated on top of the uh, oceanic crust. And then it went into the Mariana Trench and got pulled, pulled down towards that suture. So I'll talk about that battle that uh, continent A was, was uh, undertaking and it actually caused tension, you'll see in the next slide. Okay, this is the second of three slides on continent A, showing the dynamic of what happened with continent A. So um, there's a resting position that you can see on Google Earth of continent A as shown here, where I'm highlighting uh, continent A position. I put it into parts, because I'll show how the parts change as this thing migrates. So it was next to um, Antarctica and South America tail, which uh, is about like over here. It kind of got bent up and it's still bent. In fact, so you can see that pretty clearly on Google Earth. You can see this resting position here. So that was where there was this battle of um, continent A was undergoing tension. There was a pull towards the suture zone or access to the suture zone at least. Um, suture zone being defined as like the um, location at the equatorial spin axis where the uh, arm of the Southeast Asia refold anchors to uh, the inner earth. So uh, there was this pull that way and there's a pull this way and this one eventually won out which I'll talk about in a minute. But you can actually see in the uh, in the ocean you can see where I'm highlighting with this dashed line. You can see like a, um, a crack some kind of lineation oriented like that. So what I believe happened was the arm of the Africa refold was starting to grow and everything and it was trying to stabilize the area. Um, and just by moving it pulled the uh, Southeast Asia refold with it. And by pulling the Southeast Asia with it, it rotated it clockwise. And um, the anchor from the uh, refold at the surface down to the inner earth was cracking the brittle upper zone of crust and that provided access and uh, um, disturbance and all for attraction into the suture zone for the other refolds, uh, such as this continent A. Everything really started moving, as you'll see. So it actually, you know, won out, and then there was this quick movement, as I show in path one here that I'm circling. And that's shown by the blue arrow in the uh, fractal that I just discussed that's in the upper left here. So there's that blue arrow that I'm highlighting. That's path one. So there's actually a resting point right here that I'm drawing an arrow to. And that resting point is shown in the fractal above that I'm circling. Okay, and it's, um, I couldn't make out the whole fractal. Uh, I'm checking it now in the main feature diagram here. That's all I can see pretty much. But that's the dynamic there. You can see the arm and everything come out and there's that um, due to the action, as I show in the blue arrow, it's sort of like the um, headwinds have, have brought back the tail up here, this tail brought was, um, you know, moved as such. And then another similar action with the um, arm of Africa occurred. And uh, what happened was this guy went to path two, continent A went to path two here. And then quickly to, to path three to the resting point. So I'm circling the pads here. Okay, so the resting point is what I was talking about before. That's that second footprint on Google Earth that you can see. So it sat there and eroded 
I think was what happened. And eventually it was light enough where it, it went into the Mariana Trench and they even formed its shape, which is like up this way. So this shape here, the part A, that's shown in blue, made the shape. And you could see like, you know, why the parts would undergo changes as they have between this one that I'm circling and uh, the first one and even the second one. First one being this and the second being this. So you can see all that. Okay, this is the third and final slide regarding continent A. It's dynamic. So continent A started here. Well, for this uh, discussion anyway, it started there and um, came down as such. And again, there was this attraction that formed the arm going that way. Both uh, this attraction and that attraction was, um, this one was going out towards a pathway here that eventually wanted to uh, feed into the suction zone. But the suction zone was driving these actions, these uh, basically, it was undergoing tension, and I showed a, a dashed line over here. You can see that in the ocean floor in this footprint that you can see in the ocean. Uh, South America is here. The arm of South America comes up a little like that. Here's Antarctica. So about 180 million years ago, probably from the movement of the um, arm of Africa, which pulled the uh, Southeast Asia refold with it, and um, it um, busted up the brittle crust from the anchor, which went from the Southeast Asia Repo down to the uh, suture zone in the inner earth at the equatorial spin axis. So that initiated this action here. And about 180 million years ago, the um, Southeast, no, I'm sorry, the continent A refold came down to a resting position as such. It was seen in the fractal in Maine. And then Probably due to the arm of Africa trying to snatch the um, Russia refold as it scooted away off the back of North America, uh, that action caused tremendous tectonics uh, after like 100 million years ago. And um, most likely that was the uh, culprit that did this where uh, path two went back like that into reverse and probably pretty much simultaneously path three up like this, up to its resting position shown right here. This is continent A. Incidentally, it was hooking Zealandia with it, and rotating it counterclockwise um, as it went uh, adjacent to Antarctica and Australia. So it got into that resting position that I just showed here that I'm highlighting. Um, and it probably eroded and um, was uplifting. And then when it was light enough, it was small already over here. When it was light enough, um, it was able to take this pathway, as shown here, right into the Mariana Trench, which is here, form the shape of it. You can see these two arc shapes here. And it went along the red, and it was heading towards, at least, I don't know if it made it, but heading towards that suture zone, which is here. And it's probably busted up and brittle as I was talking about in the crust in this zone. So this is like a gravity anomaly in this whole area right here. So that's where it would wanna, where it was trying to get to. It's trying to get to the suture zone right at the equatorial spin axis eventually. But through that access zone, through the busted up zone is where it was going through, probably most likely going through. Okay, we're up to about 145 million years ago. And you see this featured fractal in New Hampshire in the middle. There's another New Hampshire uh, fractal shown on the right insert. That's like 100 million years ago, just after. And uh, again, there's this um, breakup of Pangaea. This is in Maine, USA, that I'm circling on the insert. That's like 105 to 110 million years ago. And the diagram at the bottom is like 200 million year old depiction of uh, all the refolds. Okay, this is all for comparison. Okay, so if we look at this 200 million year old diagram below, I'm highlighting now, this is North America. You see the left arm attaches down below. You see the Russia refold here. You can see the arm of Africa over here, arm of the Africa refold. And it's advancing and it's rotating this Southeast Asia refold clockwise as shown in the blue arrow. 
So after this 200 million year old diagram, there's a little bit of movement. And um, what happens is the North America refold springs off of the Africa refold here that I'm highlighting. So as it springs off, if you look at the main featured fractal, you see that left arm here becomes unattached. It moves up, moves up as such. And it actually bumps up the Russia refold here that I'm showing, showing highlighting here. And it moves it to the left a bit. So there's an up and to the left. There's an up this way, and there's a movement to the left. How do I know that? Well, first of all, the arm came up. Again, that left arm came up here, and it pushed up. You can actually see there's like an arching there into the Russia refold. And what you can see here on this tail that I'm highlighting, you can tell that there's an upward movement because it flattens out. You can also tell that there's a lateral a movement this way that I'm showing in this arrow because of uh, this arm here that I'm highlighting. It's uh, going up against the headwinds. So it's kind of a combination movement if you could uh, visualize that. So the point of attachment of the Russia refold was more over here. See where I'm highlighting? And it shifted over to the, uh, the left. Of course, as the arm came up, the North America arm or leg, whatever you want to call it, this thing came up. That's what caused all that. So around 180 million years ago, there was like this chain reaction, which is basically the beginning of the Pangaea breakup. Now we're right in the heart of it. But about 180 million years ago, there was the um, evacuation of the uh, continent A refold that we discussed. And there was the um, Africa nudged into um, North America, and it rotated as such, as I'm describing in this uh, slide. And the Russia refold moved as such. And then, um, as you see later in the 105 million year old to 110 million year old fractal that I'm checking now, you can see what happens next or soon. There's actually an intermediate slide before that. Final thing that I should note is the uh, Greater Antilles formed about 135 million years ago, just after this, and they're like arched like this. That's that uh, arch you see in the Caribbean, something like that. So if you look at the insert on the left from Maine, <clears throat> I'll show you that Greater Antilles are basically where I'm highlighting here. So you can see the uh, North America refold has migrated across the Caribbean at that point up to uh, 105, 110 million years ago from this point that we're showing at 145 million years ago. Okay, we're up to about 125 million years ago. This fractal, main featured fractal is in Massachusetts and New Hampshire, and it shows um, two phase movement, which I'll talk about in a minute. There's a Russia refold on the top, first phase, Russia refold in blue, second phase, and the um, yellow outline refold is a North America refold. Also shows a little boudin at the bottom here I'm pointing to. So for comparison, we're gonna include these um, figures here that I'm circling as 105 to 110 million year old fractal in Maine, USA, showing five and a half of the seven refolds during the breakup of Pangaea, 105 to 110 million years ago. The lower fractal, lower right fractal is the previous slide, uh, fractal from uh, New Hampshire showing the Russia refold and North America refold about 145 million years ago, just before this one. So remember I talked about the um, Greater Antilles on the previous slide, the Greater Antilles formed like 135 million years ago. That's according to the geologic literature. So if you look at the uh, fractal on the lower right, this Greater Antilles was something like this, arched up and it's in the Caribbean. Okay, so that's significant because I believe this two phase movement had to do with that. So the first phase was a rotation clockwise of the North American refold. So how do I know that? Well, if you compare the two, um, the insert on the lower right, uh, you see the um, what I'm highlighting now, this, uh, this arm of the Russia refold. So the movement was, was up and to the left, kind of a combination. So this arm that I just highlighted on this insert is flattened out either from moving up or possibly from moving to the left, but we do know it moved up and to the left. There's evidence of that. So now 
Check out the arm over here that I'm circling. It's going the other way. So that means it's facing a headwind as such. Okay. So you know there's movement that way. And just by looking at North America refold, it looks like it rotated clockwise. All right. And there's still um, the bending of the arm here. But it hadn't had time to, uh, to do the tailwind thing as it did you know, in the lower right fractal, for instance. So that's still up, and it hadn't had time to do it because there's a quick movement back this way. And it went that way, as you can see in the uh, blue outline, Russia refold. So that happened as the um, arm of North America closed, and uh, also as the um, North America refold rotated this way. How do I know that? Well, look at the severe, um, the shape of the uh, arm here on the blue refold that shows that tremendous, um, you know, up against the headwinds thing going that way. And in addition, you have that tremendous tailwind thing going the, this way, which is the opposite of what's above in red. So there's obviously movement to the left. And then in the next slide, you see it really falling off the back so you know it continues. It's falling off the back of the North America refold. See that? It's holding on to dear life. You got that skin friction trying to develop. It's just falling off the cliff, so to speak. There's almost like a there's like a frontier and it just falls off that cliff. So that's from continued counterclockwise rotation to the left when you go to the 105 to 110 million year old fractal on the insert to the right. So even if you look at and compare these three fractals, the um, oldest one at the right, the lower right, 145, even look at the Budin at the bottom, I'm circling it, it's facing to the left as such, uh, it's tilted to the left. Then it goes upright in the main featured fractal here, and then it starts tilting to the, uh, I'm circling again, tilting to the left again in the uh, 105 to 110 million year old fractal in the upper right insert. So there's just more evidence there. And one thing I forgot to mention, and it's all part of the whole um, movement to the left, as you can see in the blue Russia refold fractal over here. Uh, look at this arch here. So that means, um, you know, the this side is going faster than this side. So it's like causing that arch. And look what happens again in the... Uh, Fractal to the right, 105 to 110 million old fractal. That's when it's really trying to create that surface area and hold on to dear life, like I said. Okay, this is a beautiful fractal of the breakup of Pangaea, and it's in Maine, USA. It represents about 110, 105 to 110 million years ago. And uh, been brought up before, now I'll get into the details of it. Uh, as I was discussing on previous slides, this Greater Antilles is uh, in this area where I'm highlighting, see in uh, the Caribbean here, between South America and North America. So the, the uh, Greater Antilles are there. And um, it's kind of defining the movement of the North America refold, how it uh, had rotated and all. Now it's in the active phase of uh, rotating counterclockwise this way. And you can see that the uh, Russia refold has been trying to develop this surface area here. You can see the uh, the shape of the bottom of the uh, border of the refold. It's getting thrown off the back of the North America refold. There's almost like a frontier, like a cliff, like I said, and it's falling off that cliff in a sense. As you can see, it's um, facing great headwinds in the front tail area here that I'm circling. And there's that uh, tailwind thing going on in the back. So incidentally, the next phase will be that that uh, arm of Africa goes and fetches the Russia refold. But for now, uh, there's just this um, pretty pretty violent movement going on during this breakup of Pangaea. There's probably a lot of distortion here between uh, the distance between the uh, arm of the Africa refold that I'm circling, the tip of it, and the Russia refold up here on the left. Uh, it's not that big of a distance because there's this curvature to the earth thing going on. Um, but some other uh, features I should note here. The Southeast Asia refold is uh, reversed. So the uh, fractal shows it here on the left that I'm highlighting, but the actual one is to the right. And um, there had been movement to the, um, shown in the blue arrow here that I'm highlighting clockwise, because 
the arm of Africa has been moving out as shown in the blue arrow that it shows on the arm here. So it pulled it with it and it thinned it out in the front area that I'm highlighting. So it you know, pulled it in this direction and essentially it's rotating Southeast Asia refold, rotating that way. And that's really initiating tectonics. Things are getting attracted to that suture zone where the arm, uh, which is over on this where I'm circling, it's on that and it goes down and attaches to the uh, equatorial spin axis more or less in that direction. So it's in this position over here where I'm highlighting. It's in this position here, but the arm comes down like that. Okay. So since there's this pretty rapid counterclockwise rotation of North America and really the whole system here, drawing the arrow, uh, that's evident in the, um, if you look at this insert here, showing, uh, see on the lower right, let's put a check there. That's a um, Great Lakes rotational signature fractal there, but it's mimicking what's happening with Florida. So Florida, as I'm circling here up above in the main, uh, featured fractal. It's outlined in red and it's bent as such, but it eventually goes from the blue, where I'm drawing the uh, purple arrow, it's shown in blue, which is the same as the red above, and it rotates um, counterclockwise to the yellow position. So that happened pretty quick. That's why there's like this phase thing going on you can see in that area. Another thing to note, you can see the uh, Asteroid impact fractal in blue in North America, highlighting that now. Okay. You can see the uh, resting positions of the Budins between uh, South America and North America. There's like these rotational lineations that I drew in the arrows, everything flipped and rotated. Okay, so Greater Adria, which was a microcontinent, it was forming as a land bridge off of this uh, little arm that I'm highlighting, a little arm of Africa. See that? So it was forming there, and um, it was eventually uh, pushed off of that arm as these big motions began. And the next uh, reaction is the arm of Africa goes out and fetches that Russia refold, which zips away. So you'll see that coming up in the next slide. Okay, the next few slides are uh, basically 100 million years ago and uh, just after. So there's a quick event here. Um, as you see in the lower insert, this is the, uh, the fractal in Maine that uh, shows a five and a half of the seven refold structures that uh, are now um, really moving around independently. And as you can see, the uh, Russia refold here at the top that I'm highlighting, upper left, that's uh, sliding off the back of North America. And uh, it's holding on to dear life, as you can see, um, trying to create surface area there. And the, uh, due to the headwinds, that front nose is really getting uh, compressed there. So at this instant of time, break of, of Pangea about 100 million years ago, the uh, Africa arm, the arm of the refold of Africa, went out and actually snatched the Russia refold, which is here, and brought it back. And I believe uh, in the process, it must have damaged some oceanic or... Uh, upper mantle, some brittle area in the top because uh, it later created like a gravity anomaly and a big attraction zone adjacent to the uh, Russia refold. So during this action, I'm looking at the text box now at the bottom, during this action of uh, the Russia refold arm snatching up the Russia refold, Africa rotated counterclockwise, the body of it, as the arm of Africa extended greatly to catch the Russia refold after 105 million years ago. From this rotation, Africa squared up, so to speak, with South America in comparison to what is seen in the 105, 110 million years, million year old fractal to the left. The elongated leg of Africa, as seen in the fractal to the left, likely shortened after it was no longer in frictional contact with South America. So check this out. You see the long leg in the insert here, highlighting. And, um, you know, if you rotate Africa counterclockwise, it's going to look more like uh, what we see here. So in that uh, vicinity of all this action with the Russia refold and everything, I'll talk about Greater Adria. It says Greater Adria, according to this text box here, drifted northward and began to collide with Europe 120 to 100 million years ago for geologic literature. So it drifted northward, you know, that's, as you can see, it um, due to this... Uh, 
little, this small arm here where it formed as a land bridge and it was pushing northward. And then um, I believe that uh, geological literature also says that it started sinking around that time, uh, just uh, at the, uh, just say closer to 100 million years ago. And I think that's because of that action when the arm went out quickly to retrieve the Russia refold that probably kind of sucked it down to some degree. And then it, when it brought, when the arm brought uh, the Russia refold back, it crushed the greater Adria, as we'll see in a future slide. But I think it also damaged the uh, crust, as I was saying, probably in that process, whether it was the arm of Africa itself or just the uh, something associated with uh, Russia refold. And specifically, uh, at the very end, it collided with Europe when um, the Russia refold was uh, really coddled into a um, position where it uh, smashed that uh, greater Adria microcontinent in this area. As it pulled the Russia refold in, it smashed it. We'll see in a future slide. So that's that collision. So now to discuss uh, continent A, which is in the purple here. It's in a, uh, it's not in the resting position yet. It's probably somewhere in progress. Uh, 105 million year old fractal shows it uh, frozen there. So it's instant of time that it, um, highlighting it now here, that it uh, stayed there to make kind of a footprint. But as you can see from the purple paths, it started, the uh, arm was here and uh, trying to get into that uh, suture zone, attraction zone. So then it um, was overcome by, um, the forces it's going to pull down here as you see the purple arrows and what happened was it um so zealandia was across here as a land bridge from uh basically africa or the arm of um continent a all the way to uh india it was like in this area and um after the continent a refold evacuated and went uh in the purple path is shown here and here, the uh, brittle shard of glass, basically, of uh, Zealandia, which I'm showing in the insert to the right, is this here. I don't want to clutter it up too much, but um, so that rotated counterclockwise during that pullout, and then it uh, ended up on um, across uh, Antarctica here, where I'm highlighting. And then as greater, as, uh, excuse me, as continent A, went along these purple paths, it hooked it again and rotated it further counterclockwise to the resting position shown in the insert here. So you can see in the insert, um, I show in this little thing over here, that was the um, arm of continent A, which is here, and it actually pushed up like a fault here, pushed in this direction. And uh, this is the, the tail of um, Antarctica, is shown as such which would be like the ocean here where i'm highlighting and um the uh arm of south america the tail i should say is right here on the left side and that would be like over here so all land bridge associated with that and then all um you know went on a journey and, and ended up uh over in this area so you can see that uh that hook feature here I'm highlighting in the insert, that's like over here. So it took a, a journey from the area in purple that I'm highlighting over to there. Okay, so reading these text boxes, Madagascar broke off Africa according to geologic literature 135 to 120 million years ago. Uh, right here, Madagascar um, was still attached to India. It was likely attached by the land bridge of the microcontinent of Zealandia, according to my model. Zealandia broke off Antarctica between 130 and 85 million years ago, also stated in literature as 100 million years ago specifically. So what I think that was when it broke off Antarctica, I think that's when um, continent A was on this part of the journey here that I'm circling, and it hooked it again and broke it off and then dragged it over to uh, its resting position on the right, which I'm putting a check by. Uh, right here again, as we discussed before, continent A was under tremendous tension prior to evacuating the area uh, shown in the purple path. So the purple path and um, and the red path to like over here show the uh, direction of uh, suction or attraction 
toward the Southeast Asia refold, which is up here on the top. And the um, arm going to the uh, equatorial spin axis is going like this way. And that's where it, um, the attraction is, is where the broken crust is somewhere in the, uh, the zone. And um, it's literally trying to get to that equatorial spin axis where the um, suture is. That's where the real attraction is. But anything in any broken crust would provide access or attraction through that. Okay, French Polynesia is forming at this time from, uh, I believe, from scraping of continent A in the area. It's on its journey. It's somewhere in this vicinity. It hasn't hit the resting point yet around the corner. Uh, but it's the, the refold in purple that I'm putting a check by right now. I'll get us another thing regarding Zealandia right here. Zealandia likely wrote a rotated counterclockwise, as I discussed, after the evacuation of continent A, it showed in purple. Continent A evacuated approximately 180 million years ago and may have been interpreted in, in geologic literature as the movement of the United Continent of Antarctica, Australia, and India. Okay, um, in general, various Russia refold mountains, I call them because it's forming from this whole dynamic here, formed from the mid-Jurassic through the Cretaceous. Uh, specifically, there's the uh, Chersky Range that formed 135 to 142 million years ago in this area that's uh, shown here. And the Verkhoyansk Mountains formed in the Cretaceous over here. And I was saying here the Russia refold started to get cradled by the Africa arm in this text box here. The South Atlantic Ocean opened up about 140 million years ago. Okay, notice the change in character of the North America refold, which I'm highlighting in purple uh, here and the one in the insert. So that uh, change when the, um, the sudden movement of the uh, Africa arm to snatch up the um, Russia refold likely deformed it in such a manner or the arm on the left here looks like it slipped up a little bit or whatever, and then it kind of started bulging where there's a great deal of tension in this area um, because the outer fibers are under extreme tension and they're uh, bulging, so there's a tensional zone there in the outer fibers. So I say North America is bulging here and is under tension from the pulling of Florida and counterclockwise rotation. You can see the two opposing forces. Uh, there's like a, a pull through the Caribbean area here. And there's also just the general rotation and then attraction um, around that whole merry-go-round system here that I'm circling. Uh, and as you'll see, these boudins here get uh, thrown into the northern part of southern, northern part of South America, I should say, once uh, the refold, the North America refold snapped. You'll see that on the next slide. The snapping, uh, I should clarify, is like New Brunswick, Canada, and uh, what became like the area of Alaska. It's now like the Bering Strait. So that's uh, this area here that I'm highlighting on North America. Okay, back to this text box here. North America refold, as I kind of said before, rotated a little bit uh, clockwise as a unit after the arm of Africa pulled the Russia refold back. And I had that kind of bulging and changed the uh, character of it from the insert to this one in yellow. The Western Interior Seaway in North America formed approximately 100 to 105 million years ago, and its formation may have been associated with the strain of the Russian refold on North America on its back at the time and subsequent evacuation of the Russian refold due to its embracement by the Africa refold arm. Okay, so this is final text box here. Bermuda formed uh, right after, as you'll see in the next slide or whatever, next slide or two, right after the uh, North America refold snapped and uh, the entire refold of North America went uh, down quickly, sort of uh, to the south and maybe in like a clockwise direction as Florida was pulled toward the Caribbean. So that uh, scraping, whether it was the ocean floor or the upper mantle, that scraping caused uh, the uh, hotspot of Bermuda. Uh, just like um, the scraping caused, uh, the, I believe, the French Polynesia hotspot area over by continent A on the lower right of the diagram. Same idea. Okay, this fractal is um, of the North America refold subdivision, the East Coast subdivision. It's in Nova Scotia, about 100 million years old depiction here. Okay, so what you see here is um, that coast, like I said, there's a, uh, you see North Carolina, 
which is where I'm circling here, that kink in the land. See a nice delineation of Florida here. Gulf of Mexico, Mexico down here. See the uh, the edge of the refold is um, the Ohio River and the um, Mississippi is this one here. So it comes together and forms the, actually it does later, interestingly enough, when this thing rotates clockwise, which is the next step, I guess it kind of uh, becomes this border here that I'm highlighting really becomes the uh, Mississippi. So you'll notice in Florida, I put this yellow line in across the center line of it. Uh, that's having to do with this rotational signature of the Great Lakes. You can see the, um, there's a Great Lakes rotational signature that's outlined in the, uh, the green ellipse here, and then it's uh, shown down here where I'm checking. So it's really hard to see, but there was a previous counterclockwise rotation to get to the yellow line which I'm highlighting in the figure, it's on the right side. So it, there was propagation to get to that in the counterclockwise direction. So that's the point we're at now, is this yellow line that I'm highlighting now on the main featured fractal here. So the next step is clockwise rotation. As this whole um, North America refold goes in this direction, and uh, that's how I think Bermuda was formed as it uh, scraped over the oceanic crust or whatever caused the hot spot. I'm sure it has something to do with it. It was around the same time. Um, so anyway, if you look at this 33 million year old fractal on the left, uh, after that, that indicates this uh, violent rotation clockwise because there's a pivot point. Um, I'm gonna put it in purple here. If you look at the um, fractal here on the lower left, this Great Lakes rotational signature, where I'm highlighting on the top, there's this pivot point where all those uh, rotational features come together. That pivot point rotates clockwise, and I'll get into more detail on this later in the next presentation. So it rotates clockwise to get to that, which is, this is 33 million years ago, this fractal here on the right. And so is this one. So this is the Nastapoca arc fractal, and that's after severe counterclockwise rotation of the entire North America refold in it. Uh, the, the fractal just slipped like crazy. Uh, the asteroid impact fractal and everything rotated violently counterclockwise. And you'll see, um, actually you see it up in here where I'm circling. And that was discussed previously. So there's counterclockwise to clockwise to counterclockwise rotation that's recorded in the Great Lakes signature. And it's, um, Interesting, it's always a function of how Florida is oriented. So that's discussed later, like I said. Okay, we're up to about 100 million years ago. And um, this fractal is in New Hampshire. And the insert is just after this, that's in New Hampshire also. It's there for comparison and discussion. So um, just looking at what's outlined in yellow here, I'm putting the check on, that's the North America refold. And um, down below is South America. The Budins are not shown here. Uh, I'll get into that in a minute. So what's going on here is there is tremendous tension in um, between New Brunswick, which I'm highlighting, and like uh, what is now Bering Strait or Alaska area where I'm highlighting now. So that snapped. You can see the red arrows showing that tension and then it snapped in the direction as shown. And North America refold came down kind of violently down in this direction as I'm uh, circling here. Right, and um, the arm of um, what's now Africa and all, everything rotated violently. You can see phases here. So I think this fractal is somewhere between 100, just after 100, and about 75 million years ago. All right, and from this violent action, I believe Bermuda was formed because Bermuda formed according to geologic literature around 100 million years ago, and that's when this absolutely violent reaction occurred. You know, everything moved down as you see in the arrows and. Um, hot spots are formed by like, I believe at least by thinning of the uh, oceanic crust by scraping, abrasion. So that's what formed the hot spot of what became Bermuda. Okay, so I'm going to read this text box just for, um, again, comparing these fractals, the insert and the main featured one. The insert above is the next stage of movement of the North America refold in yellow. The refold rebounded back to the north 
after pushing the two Budins not shown on the fractal to the right, as I discussed, to the south. This movement of the refold is evident in a straightening out of the left leg and possible slight counterclockwise rotation of the leg with Florida, causing a more evident kink at North Carolina, due in part to further compression at New Brunswick. The arching of the west end back, the reestablishment of the orientation of the Budin to the south, and the dragging of the area of Alaska slightly closer to where it snapped at New Brunswick, Canada, so that whole dynamic suggests like a slight rebound. A lot of times there's um, actions and a little, you know, a little rebound going on. You see that a lot in these fractals. So you can see in this insert, there's that more distinct kink of North Carolina and I'm highlighting compared to this one. Uh, there's an arching of the back from that sort of rebound clockwise. And this guy where I'm circling moved a little closer to its snap off position. There's a kink in the leg here. You know, there's severe bending over here in the main featured fractal. These, there's like a straightening out of the boot and shown here. It's going to be blown up on the next slide. Um, so that obviously came back up this way and I'm showing on the main feature fractal here. Okay, on this slide, which is a uh, 75 million year old representation of the North America refold and uh, Central America boot and shown, it's in uh, New Hampshire. So it's uh, showing basically, as I described on a previous slide, there was this, um, at least for the, uh, just say the upper Northwest portion of this, there was a motion in this direction with that snap back. And then there's a slight little rebound that I was discussing. And uh, evidence of that is uh, where I'm circling now, you see there's like a flat end of um, what became Bering Strait in the Alaska area. And also there's flat end of like New Brunswick area. So that's still feeling that uh, that um, this area associated with that snapback. So there's, um, depending on where you're looking at, I mean, there's the left leg has rebounded. As you can see, I'm circling that. There's still that kink there that I should note. I think this comes up later. And um, basically, uh, so there's this, you can see a dynamic between the last one and this one. And I discussed this. So we'll look at some of the text boxes. Uh, Laramide orogeny was basically between 70, 80 million years ago to, depending on the source of geologic literature, 35 or 55 million years ago, the Rocky Mountains and other mountains formed in the area. Um, so the Hudson Seaway opened up at approximately 75 million years ago through here. That's definitely got to be related to this dynamic. Because there's a you know tension in there, and then path of least resistance is uh, where the seaway would open up. Okay, flattening at snap end of at New Brunswick. I talked about that. Um, so as per geologic literature, looking at the bottom here, the Caribbean and Central America volcanics formed approximately 80 million years ago. It's a lot going on here, and I believe with the uh, fast dynamic of um, refold movement, there's scraping and abrasion of the uh, oceanic crust or the upper mantle or, and whatever it is, it's the uh, scraping of brittle crust and that causes the volcanics, hot spots and all that. Uh, if you're looking at um, you'll, this diagram, you'll see what is this blue dashed line? That's a refold that I see that kind of mimics about 525 million years ago, the North America refold when it quickly rotated counterclockwise. And it shares a border with the magenta one, um, which is in a C shape like this. And uh, that's the interesting thing about these fractals. They share borders a lot. So you can see that here. Okay, what we have here is a 36 to 74 million year old fractal of uh, North America refold. And uh, I'm thinking it's more like 60. I'm going to write it here. Um, and the one on the insert on the left is about, uh, we just discussed about 75 million years ago. For comparison reasons, it's shown there. Uh, the insert on the right, for comparison reasons, circling it now, the uh, one in the middle is about, um, I'm going to have to write it here, 33, 34 million years ago. The um, one on the lower left is about 28 million years ago. One on the lower right, just showing the east coast of uh, North America, is about 33 to 30 million years ago.
writing that in there. Okay, so, okay, you can see here um, that between the 75 million year old one, which I'm drawing the arrow to, and the one featured, the uh, strain is building um, in the um, arm here that's up against the Russia refold, I assume, so it's sticking there, and then it snaps, as you see in the future ones on the lower right. You see that arm has snapped. And actually, um, you can see that uh, this area here that I'm highlighting in the main featured uh, 60 million year old fractal or so, this, this arch starts to deepen because uh, it makes sense the unit is rotating counterclockwise and that strain is building uh, or in the Alaska area and then it snaps. And after it snaps, the uh, whole refold rotates counterclockwise. Uh, yeah, something to note here in this uh, main 60 million year old fractal, you can see that the uh, leg remains bent similar to the previous fractal here. So that bent section here. And uh, you can see the internal features of the uh, subdivided section on the east coast of North America features there like the uh, Mississippi and Ohio rivers. And um, you can see the uh, due to compression, the uh, North Carolina, Florida, this whole dynamic here, it's kind of interesting. It just sort of reinforces the features. There's the Great Lakes area rotational fractal shown, which we'll get into more detail later. So again, it snapped previously around 100 million years ago or so. Um, there's New Brunswick, Canada there, and uh, Alaska and area way up there now. Okay, this is a uh, about a 55 million year old depiction of the globe. Uh, I'm going to discuss these text boxes to kind of get a insight as to what's going on a little before and a little after 55 million years ago. So um, start here at the upper uh, part of talking about Southeast Asia refold, which is in green. Southeast Asia refold may have stabilized suction as the Africa refold arm cradled the Russia refold, resulting in the Hawaii Emperor sea chain. As you can see over here, it's like a lineation. And um, this is a, a stabilizing counterclockwise rotation of the Southeast Asia refold. So it's moving this way as it cradles the Russia refold in orange here. And it kind of um, sticks to the uh, Southeast Asia this way. So it's going to go move actually that way, which is counterclockwise now instead of clockwise. Uh, continent A stalled in the position shown, which is at the lower right in purple. Let me check there. Um, as its previous movement was initiated by clockwise rotation, that's the destabilizing rotation of the Southeast Asia refold. Okay, Greater Adria in this area is um, moving south, according to the geologic literature at this time. Its northern half is likely starting the process of dividing and rotating off its southern half and breaking in half, basically, as the little arm of Africa is compressed. There's the little arm of Africa. Um, the Alps begin, all related to this, the Alps begin starting to form again around 70 million years ago, likely due to the folding of the arm here, the little arm. Norway and Sweden mountains begin forming around 66 million years ago in this area, according to the literature. Uh, so again, the uh, Hawaii Emperor Sea Chain about 85 to 35 million years ago, likely formed from, from the movement of the arm cradling the Russia refold. So it's like a lineation, like a line of these volcanics this way. Okay, uh, Madagascar broke away from India 90 to 88 million years ago. That was probably more like the connection along the land bridge of Zealandia, not that way. According to literature, 90 to 88 million years ago, broke off. The Hudson Seaway and the Western Interior Seaway have disappeared at this point. Central America volcanics begin in the late Cretaceous, from all that uh, action that I've been talking about. Caribbean formed 80 million years ago from Budin movement and movement of the North American refold. Okay, Zealandia land bridge likely, likely uh, spanned from continent A refold arm, now evacuated to India refold arm. So that's this whole area. Uh, Zealandia broke off Antarctica 130 to 85 million years ago, 100 million years ago specifically in some geologic literature, and then broke off Australia 85 to 60 million years ago. That's according to my model. Um, now it's according to published geologic literature, but that matches my model, I'm sorry. Uh, future rift shown 
in black dashed line, border of India and Australia. See, so I'm pointing that out here. Australia broke away from New Zealand at 85 million years ago or just before. Uh, this section of land broke away from Australia prior to Australia breaking away from New Zealand, say 85 or more million years ago. This section of land appears to have been jammed on the eroded material from continent A. Continent A remains stationary as shown from 95 million years ago to 45 million years ago. This may have been due to the lack of clockwise rotation, possibly even stabilizing counterclockwise rotation of the Southeast Asia refold during this time as the Africa refold arm cradled the Russia refold. That's what I just discussed before. Continent A was likely reduced in size due to its erosion and uplift as it transitioned to the brittle state from 95 million years ago to 45 million years ago. It was then mobilized toward the Mariana Trench at 45 million years ago. It was like a frozen uh, brittle piece that was like light enough to get um, moved into the Mariana Trench. Okay, this is a image of Google Earth showing features I drew in. It's, uh, Ranges in time between 95 and 40 million years ago. Um, basically just giving some more insight as to what I was discussing. You can see it visually. So there's um, actually a numbered sequence here. You see number one here. One, Australia broke off Antarctica 85 million years ago or a little later. Here's Antarctica. Australia was in the position where the arrows are shown. Two, uh, Australia drifted off New Zealand 85 million years ago or less. See that uh, action there. And three, India broke off 40 to 50 million years ago off Australia. So that was like this uh, C-shaped border here where it broke off. Uh, some of the features pointed out here, but Australia drifted prior to the encroachment of Southeast Asia refold structure, which rotated clockwise and into the area shown. Well, you can kind of see that dynamic there. You can see the faulting and everything. There's a brittle fault there in Southeast Asia. You can see that drift going on and it uh, has encroached in. So you know uh, there's there's like the chronological events you can see going on there. Uh, you can see the Mariana Trench here. Continent A stalled, as I said, 95 to 45 million years ago, then mobilized into the Mariana Trench in the brittle state when maybe it was like light enough or whatever. And the direction was in the, the red arrows. Now you can see this SC structure in Papua New Guinea, and it's blown up on the bottom insert here. So that's kind of an indication of that uh, shearing direction of uh, continent A going into the Mariana Trench. Uh, here's Australia. There's um, the um, brittle edge of India is shown in the north here. Oh, that's where... Um, when India was attached, it was all stretched out and it was attached at that point. And um, as I said, India broke off. You don't see it here. There's New Zealand, Tonga Trench there. Uh, there's uh, eroded material from continent A in that zone. I called it a compacted zone previously. Uh, this uh, ductal remnant, at least the shape of it, of Australia may have jammed up and in the material eroded from the stalled and uplifted continent A from a period of 95 million years ago to 45 million years ago. So that's that zone. Continent A started stalled, location shown in the uh, red outline, and um, made a footprint as you can see today. Okay, this is uh, in Vermont, Maine, and New Hampshire, United States. Uh, very large uh, kind of um, rough fractals of um, North America at about 35 million years ago. Sometimes the fractals are uh, what I call distorted or rough. Okay, here's a depiction of the globe about 35 million years ago. Again, talking about things a little before, a little after to get some insight to see what we've talked about and everything, to kind of pull everything together, everything's shown. Uh, there's that uh, slide that I had shown here the insert, just as reference. I should note that um, with these red arrows here, at this point at 35 million years ago, they had um, these land masses had already disappeared into uh, the directions of the arrows. So that's just to show, they're shown here just to show where they came from for uh, 
completion and understanding. Okay, I'm not going to read this whole text box, and uh, it's been discussed many times, but uh, one thing that I should mention, just uh, 420 to 430 million years ago is when the uh, Africa arm here started rotating uh, clockwise, this um, Southeast Asia refold. Okay, so going through these text boxes, access to center of pull suction zone is below and attached to oceanic crust, more or less over there. The Alps continued forming as the small Africa arm was crushed by the Russian refold. The Pyrenees were raised later during the Miocene 23 to 5.3 million years ago after the small Africa arm was crushed by the Russian refold. It's that area. The northern half of Greater Adria likely split and rotated counterclockwise off the southern half of the small arm of Africa as the small arm of Africa was crushed by the Russian refold. Himalayan mountains began forming 40 to 50 million years ago in that area. That's, of course, from the impact of uh, India. Guam is approximately 42 million years ago, according to geologic literature. That's around the um, Mariana Trench, which I'm highlighting here. Okay, the clockwise rotation of the Southeast Asia refold green as a result of the movement of Africa refold arm likely triggered many tectonic events as described in this drawing. So again, it's um, with that, if you look at the Africa arm with that movement as such, it's causing a clockwise destabilizing rotation of the Southeast Asia arm. Tectonic movement is a result of rotation, stretching, and strain of the Southeast Asia single ductile anchor that is anchored to the inner earth at great depths. When the strain forces the upper zone of oceanic crust to break in a brittle manner, it allows an access path to the tremendous attraction at the inner anchor zone located on the Earth's equatorial spin axis. Okay, here the clockwise rotation of Southeast Asia refold was likely due to the Africa refold arm in white extending to cradle and grip the Russia refold in orange. Both the Russia refold and the arm of Africa refold show increased deformation toward the center of the access to the pole suction zone. Okay, way over here, the South America Budins likely rotated across the Caribbean quickly during the latest phase of movement during the active period of approximately 30 to 50 million years ago. So those are, um, you can see in Central America, I'm highlighting now, those are the Budins there. Uh, India separated 40 to 50 million years ago off the black line as shown. Okay, Tonga Trench, subduction zone associated with the evacuation of continent A into the Mariana Trench at approximately 45 million years ago. 100 to 140 million year old ocean trench is subducting into the Tonga Trench. Over here, Hawaiian Islands hotspot formed approximately 45 million years ago and is likely associated with the reaction, reactivation and movement of continent A. Continent A here shown in purple, got pulled into the Mariana Trench approximately 45 million years ago and left its arc-like shape, black line that you can see above. Um, it was stalled from approximately 95 to 45 million years ago and eroded and uplifted to the brittle state during this stalled time period. Galapagos Island hotspot formed by scraping from bulldozed material from Budins approximately 20 million years ago. Okay, Yucatan Peninsula formed a Budin approximately 33 to 24 million years ago. Um, that's according to the literature of that time period. This was likely facilitated after the pulling away of Alaska and area. So it just started rotating as uh, the whole North American refold rotated. Okay. Um, Big Bend on the Rio Grande, according to literature, formed approximately 33 to approximately 33 million years ago. Its movement is facilitated after the pulling away of Alaska and area. Okay, referring here to the North America refold, there's a this refold zone boundary was likely the foundation of the western interior interior seaway of the Cretaceous, which is now closed. 
think that this border goes through like Yellowstone and all, and uh, you'll see more information about that later. The Mississippi Rift ended approximately 22 to 15 million years ago. This refold zone boundary formed the St. Lawrence River and the Ohio River. There's the intersection of uh, the uh, Mississippi Rift, uh, Ohio and uh, Mississippi River there also. Okay, uh, this refold zone edge and what was also the Hudson Seaway now closed likely formed the foundation of the Mississippi River through here. Alaska and area pulled off New Brunswick, Canada approximately 100 million years ago. That's been discussed. Okay, this uh, fractal in, um, where is it, in Quebec, Canada is about 34 to 33 million years old, uh, the depiction anyway, includes um, North America, Central America, and South America. For reference, I'm also showing a uh, 28 million year old fractal in the lower left and a 30 to 33 million year old fractal on the lower right. Um, determining these ages basically because the uh, Big Bend on the Rio Grande is about, uh, according to literature, about 33 million years ago that was made. So we don't see it in the main featured fractal here. We do see it in the 28 million year old fractal in the lower left, and we do see it on the 30 to 33. So I'm estimating maybe this is closer to 33, but the point is it's just um, just after the main featured fractal, the one on the lower right. And um, later on, there's uh, more rotation and all, and uh, you get the 28 million year old fractal. So what you'll notice the difference between the 28 million year old fractal and the main featured one, Check out the top of the main featured one. There's this indentation here. Uh, that starts to become a little bit less in the 28 million year old fractal because the whole unit rotates counterclockwise. And uh, you can see based on its relative position above the uh, Yucatan Peninsula, which is now forming um, in, the, in the main featured one, it's like you know above it and to the right basically. And in the 28 million year old fractal, it's um, definitely moved off in a counterclockwise direction. The, um, let's see, what else could I go over here? Okay, you can see um, from, there's so much severe counterclockwise rotation in this 28 million year old fractal. I'm highlighting the red arrow direction of movement that there's actually this gigantic SC structure, which encompasses the um, mountains of the West. So it makes you wonder Maybe they're all due to an SC structure out there, which is showing a shear sense direction of uh, counterclockwise. And you know, it's, it's all related to um, the San Andreas fault and everything, this counterclockwise movement. So undoubtedly the, um, the Budins in blue in the main featured fractal, looks like they're all jammed up there. Undoubtedly there was more slack developed as the uh, North America refold rotated counterclockwise into what you see at the 28 million year old fractal to the left. Okay, this is a fractal in Nova Scotia that we were just talking about on the previous slide, 33 to 30 million years ago. <clears throat> you see a uh, big bend on the Rio Grande here, which uh, literature says about 33 million years ago. So it might be closer to 33, or of course, uh, you know, maybe in reality, it was uh, 30 million years ago, but anyway, it's just an estimate. Um, okay, so some things are labeled here. There's the uh, rotational signature of Great Lakes shown, which we show in more detail later. There's the, there's the Mississippi and Ohio River Junction right here. Um, these fractals are kind of strange because, you know, you see a lot of distortion here. Um, Florida's gigantic here, accurately shown. You can even see the distinct bulge in the panhandle. Um, but you see this area looks very small and it's um, supposed to be bordered by the uh, Ohio River, which is up here. See the Ohio and Mississippi River junction there. But nonetheless, um, it's a fractal and things are shown uh, at different scales. Like I said, these things are kind of strange. Um, let's see. So in the lower right inset, 
is the uh, Earth today, and uh, the easternmost subdivision is outlined. We'll show more um, detail on it later when it's blown up, but uh, you can notice uh, we see the here's the Rio Grande right here. So there's that big bend there. So things came down faster on the one side uh, after um, that severe counterclockwise rotation. So the point is, uh, as I say in this text box, the fractal Nova Scotia is refold that mimics eastern North America from New Brunswick, Canada to the Rio Grande to Mexico. Okay, this is a very interesting fractal of North America and Central America. 28 million years ago is uh, when uh, the depiction is. It's in New Hampshire, and uh, you can see the severe counterclockwise rotation at this point, so much that there's this SC structure showing the shear sense is shown. Uh, you see that uh, big bend on the Rio Grande here. And uh, some other features that are shown are, um, you can see Florida, North Carolina, you can see that intersection of um, Mississippi and Ohio River there, which defines the uh, easternmost subdivision of the North America refold, as you've seen in several slides. So that fault ramp, fault ramp in the Caribbean over here, the um, Yucatan Peninsula, which was, according to the literature, formed 24 to 33 million years ago. That's why I'm estimating about 28 for this fractal here. It originated from the eastern refold zone that snapped under tension between New Brunswick, Canada, and Alaska and area. So it's that, um, you can see where it's connecting here. That, so that's feeding into the uh, eastern subdivision that I just talked about. So that's the extension is from that, and it's developed from that. It's pretty cool stuff. You can actually look at land and uh, see what uh, looks like a map of North America and Central America. The uh, next several slides show Earth today. OK, this drawing uh, showing Google Earth, um, North America refold continent, and um, Central America and part of South America. It's, uh, of course, like I said, today, all these next slides are today. I um, just wanted to stress that um, basically I, I drew in these um, borders here, you see in red. And um, I want to say that the, the borders of the refold zones are along seismically active locations, water, faults, lineations, etc. There's things you can see on Google Earth. So, um, it's evident that uh, there's there's basically this rotation going around the asteroid impact, which is shown in yellow, as I'm highlighting here, right in the by the Hudson Bay. There, there's that pendulum-like rotation. I showed the uh, subdivisions, numbered them. This is originally in the, uh, a different version of it is in the original video I did in 2019, called Plate Tectonics Unraveling the Truth. So. Um, if you look at the inserts, it's just basically showing that uh, North America did in fact uh, rotate as such because of the impact of uh, in Canada, the asteroid impact. And the upper right here, both of these showing the asteroid impact fractals too, which is like real proof. And then uh, as you saw on a recent slide, this 28 million year old fractal showing um, an SC structure, a, um, which really you know, indicates uh, shearing and it's a counterclockwise shearing indication on that structure on the uh, western part of North America, which is basically like a lot of the Rocky Mountains and all that. You can see, uh, as I'm talking about here, the Great Lakes rotational signature. There's a uh, like a squeezing occurring in the propagation directions in the northeast and counterclockwise. So you can see in those circles there, there's like a flattening. And uh, you can see why the... Um, the refold border, so to speak, the subdivision kind of uh, gets skinnier there. Refold boundary is um, on the Mississippi and Ohio River there, uh, right over here when I'm talking about. Uh, it's in a, uh, an old failed rift zone, that intersection of the Ohio and Mississippi, which is a, a rift zone is a uh, extension zone, so it's a failed extension zone. Uh, another thing to note here is um, the land sliver which I'm pointing to on the West Coast, it's small and maybe actually pulled toward the Mariana Trench. 
to some degree anyway. Uh, that's why that uh, arrow to the white is in the white is going toward the Mariana Trench. But the mainland of North America is rotating counterclockwise. So at least relative to this small sliver of land, the uh, mainland is rotating counterclockwise. And actually the eastern end of it is um, getting pulled into that um, Budin area, like we discussed pre previously, the Yucatan Peninsula and all. You can see the South America Budins sheared off the mainland due to counterclockwise rotation. The two colored Budins there, yellow and blue. You can see the uh, rotational track of South America Budins northern edge due to counterclockwise rotation in yellow. And uh, North America rotational track as a unit moved along this pathway in red as the refold rotated counterclockwise around the impact site. Budins at Greenland and Yucatan Peninsula below. Yucatan Peninsula uh, is over by, um, in Mexico, I'm highlighting it right now. So that's a Yucatan and Greenland up here is actually a, uh, like a, a Budin that got uh, separated. So that's on the outside fibers of the rotational zone. So as a unit, North America is rotating counterclockwise and those outside rotational tensional fibers are Greenland and Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, one final thing up at um, Alaska here, see so the northwest end, looks like it's sticking again to uh, Russia refold. And you can see that refold border that I'm highlighting now it goes right through Yellowstone, as you'll see later. Okay, this is Earth today around the suture zone. Uh, I'm not going to read this paragraph here. You can read it on your own time, and it's kind of discussed more or less, um, has been discussed, and as I'm going to go through this, will be discussed more or less. Okay, so um, first of all, there's um, here's the force diagram of the Earth today, and um, some of those arrows are, are shown too in the Google Earth image, but I described this before. The uh, suture from the Southeast Asia refold shown at the bottom here, the Google Earth image, that goes from this arm, and I'm highlighting down to the uh, equatorial spin axis. And you can see that right here in magenta on the uh, drawing. So um, that's where all the action is. That's where the attraction is, is at the inner earth of that suture. And that's why the suture is there. It's attracted to the inner earth. It's like a gravity thing or whatever. Um, but the broken upper crust is also providing access to that zone or a greater attraction to it at least. So um, that's why there's two uh, attraction zones. If you're looking at the diagram here, there's one and there's the other two hot spots, which are also gravity anomalies, probably implying that there's a broken crust there. It's like a lighter material, less dense material there. So that's a gravity anomaly. This is a, um, you're gonna see a greater uh, blow for this later, but this is a uh, refold I mean, excuse me, it's a fractal of a um, bunch of refold structures, and it's in Nova Scotia, and there's this little little Russia-looking uh, refold over here in the middle. It's a tiny little thing, and it's causing a big ruckus. Everything's trying to get pulled into that zone, just like it is here. It's amazing. Okay, so uh, yeah, here's the Russia refold, and you can see the yellow arrows towards the um, where the forces are getting pulled. Here's the arm of Africa refold. You can see the white arrow showing direction of pull, it's stabilizing the area. Uh, if you look at, um, you can see the small arm of Africa has been crushed here by the Russia refold. See where I'm highlighting on the north end? Uh, you have India that slammed in to um, towards the suture zone and all over there. And uh, you can see a dynamic here. I said India deformed here after the southeast, reading the text box at the bottom, India, defo India deformed here after Southeast Asia refold either rotated clockwise or moved closer to the anchor. The movement of continent A refold below the Southeast Asia refold by means of the Mariana Trench likely facilitated this. The anchor extends from this arm to the inner earth, which I showed. Okay, so what else here? Here's the um, Mariana Trench area here. I'll show the Mariana Trench at the, um, it's really at the south end of the green line there, right here. Uh, there's an ocean lineation here shown in blue that I'm highlighting now. 
there's an ocean lineation here that I'm highlighting up the uh, further north here, shown in blue. Um, you can see the edge of um, North America over by Alaska area over here at the uh, upper right. Uh, if you look at um, this part of the Africa refold arm, there's a big rift zone in there because everything's getting pulled as the movement was this way to stabilize the whole zone, as I talked about. So it had to stabilize that Russia refold and everything coming together to stabilize. So this is like a, uh, a new supercontinent. Eventually, uh, sounds kind of like doom and gloom, but eventually everything's going to come together into this area unless it destabilizes and uh, that's not good. <laughs> Okay, this is another diagram of the Earth today, the suture zone again. Uh, it's just a slightly different angle shown. So I'm going to start with these text boxes and then describe the features. Up here on the left side, the single ductile suture located originally between the Russia refold and the Southeast Asia refold that dives deep into the Earth has been stretched and rotated to the present position, extending from the arm of the Southeast Asia refold north of the Mariana Trench to its anchor position on the inner Earth at the Earth's equatorial spin axis to the west of the Southeast Asia refold. Let me show you where that is. So that's from about here to here. The most prominent access to the zone of attraction at the anchor is through the brittle upper crust of oceanic crust located below the area shown below the arm of the Africa refold. This oceanic crust was damaged when the arm of the Africa refold quickly reached out to cradle the Russian refold in an attempt to stabilize the refolds in the area at approximately 105 to 110 million years ago. Remember the main USA fractal. Interestingly enough, this was a way to guarantee joining the refolds and healing the womb at the damaged oceanic crust below. The arm of the Africa refold had its original impact near the top of the ductal anchor at the arm of the Southeast Asia refold, another zone of likely damaged oceanic crust located just south of the Earth's spin axis at approximately 420 to 430 million years ago. It may have bulldozed or at least damaged areas of the oceanic crust located below the refolds. Today, the ductal refolds are pulling towards the center of the pull suction axis zone as evidenced by their shapes and movements. Today, the Mariana Trench may be an anchor access point to another damaged oceanic crust zone due to the movement of the strained anchor, which connects to the northern arm of the Southeast Asia refold. Okay, this text box here, the rotated and stretched ductal suture anchor located between the northern arm of the Southeast Asia refold structure and its anchor point on the inner earth at the equatorial spin axis of earth located west of the Southeast Asia refold has indirectly pulled continent A refold structure into the Mariana Trench. This occurred due to the attraction of continent A to the nearby zone of damaged oceanic crust located near the top zone of the anchor, which connects to the Southeast Asia's northern arm. So Southeast Asia, um, the access to Southeast Asia was through this Mariana Trench. I'm drawing a line, and this is how the um, continent A was likely at least tr attracted to that uh, spot there. I don't know if it's all the way down there, but it went in the direction of this arrow. Okay, to this text box here. India deformed here after the Southeast refold, either rotated clockwise or moved closer to its anchor. The movement of continent, the continent A refold below the Southeast Asia refold by means of the Mariana Trench likely facilitated this. So it was like, you know, plowing through here, so that could have done it. Um, the anchor extends from the arm to the inner earth, from this arm, which we showed before. Okay, this text box, Southeast Asia refold has rotated clockwise after the arm of Africa struck 420 to 430 million years ago. Movement can be seen in its changing shape. It is anchored to the inner earth on its north arm and is free to rotate. So um, just looking at this diagram, Russia refold is at the top here, I'm highlighting. The uh, arm of the Africa refold is shown. The movement is in the uh, white arrow, predominant movement. The predominant uh, rotation of Southeast Asia refold is clockwise. I'm showing in the uh, yellow arrow that I'm just highlighting here. 
Uh, you can see India, which is up here in the top part, that is uh, split off from Australia. You can see the um, arc-like uh, place that it that it um, separated from Australia. And um, you notice a um, brittle fault here. I'm circling text box four. So that could happen from either um, clockwise or counterclockwise rotation in the Southeast Asia refold, but it's um, has to be fairly recent because it um, it's brittle, and you can see the direction there. I'm thinking that um, maybe it's about 55 million years ago when I was saying there was a little bit of counterclockwise movement with the Southeast Asia refold. Um, you know, as the uh, Africa refold arm sort of um, it, it moved the Russia refold in a manner that uh, it retracted, it, the arm retracted a little bit. And the Southeast Asia refold probably went a little bit um, counterclockwise at that point. But anyway, whenever it was, it looks like um, due to like headwinds, so to speak, you can see this, um, what I'm highlighting here on the Southeast Asia refold, this arm and this, which is flat. It looks like, um, you know, it was going in this direction for a little bit of time. See where I'm making the arrow. Okay, this is uh, Earth today again, Sutra Zone area, just a different angle. Just going to read these text boxes here. There's tremendous deformation in the Alps due to the crushing of the small refold arm of Africa by the Russia refold. So that was talked about before. Um, the Alps are uh, basically in um, the vicinity shown just below the Russia refold. Okay, and uh, you know, Russia refold is right here. I'm highlighting. There's tremendous volcanic activity in Italy and the island of Sicily. Now, there, um, Italy's here and Sicily is here. It's all related to this action, though, this crushing of the arm, volcanic activity. Uh, the edge of Africa refold has been sheared, likely been sheared, by the movement of the North America refold and developed a small arm to the north that was later crushed and sheared by the Russia refold as the Russia refold moves, moved to the south and west as it was embraced by the large arm of the Africa refold. Discovery of greater Andrea by others perfectly aligns um, with this dynamic between Africa and Russia refolds. We'll see more detail on that coming up. So you can actually see uh, in these yellow arrows that I'm highlighting, there's this tremendous shearing from the crushing of the, uh, the arm above. See where I'm highlighting as um, the Russia refold here came down and crushed that arm. And it uh, made some shearing too, which I put in the yellow arrows. The um, big arm of the Africa refold is this way and it has extended in that direction and gone around the, uh, embraced and gone around the Russia refold. You can see um, some boudins up here where I'm circling. That's due to this, um, they're kind of collecting because there was a, I'm highlighting now, see this uh, rotation of the Africa refold at one point. And these refolds, at least at one point, were in the outer fibers, where I'm showing the arrow. That's kind of the outside of the uh, mainland of Africa, which is over here. Okay, again, uh, today, this is just a different angle. The uh, suture zone in other areas, uh, particularly Africa, looking more head on in Africa. Uh, nothing really to talk about here that wasn't just discussed on the previous slide, so I'll move on. Okay, Earth today again, uh, Central and South America. I talked in detail about these um, boudins and the boudin paths shown and um, its context with um, the imagery of South America, which you can see in the upper right, that insert. But what I didn't discuss before was um, what's shown in this insert on the right. This is a magnetic anomaly. And um, showing where it is and, and it's most intense there where it's like shown in blue. So that area is what I'm going to circle now, right in here, which is real interesting because that's where I was saying, you see the uh, orange booting path, it was pulled, showing the red arrow direction to um, 
the Boudin path was pulled into the position of the yellow Boudin path. Basically, it's the same thing, except for um, if you were to yank it at uh, this area right here and pull it in that direction, that's what you got. That's what it would look like. So there's something going on here. If you look at the uh, insert at the lower right, that's from a uh, main fractal, main USA, 110 to 105 million years ago. See Africa, it's even got the long leg here. Um, it's because it's being like stretched or whatever. So there's this, um, there is like a magnetic force there or something that's um, resisting the movement. So, you know, you can see it right there. See where it's um, in contact with uh, South America. So that's, that's definitely related to this. Okay, Earth today again, uh, Central America here. What I'd like to talk about is, um, see these yellow lines on the left side of the diagram? That's showing the uh, superposition of sediments that were apparently bulldozed from these uh, movement of these boudins. So you can see a superposition principle here. Looks like the bottom one on the south was first, then the middle one, then the top one. So what that means is, um, looking at this text box here, boudin 2, which I, uh, see I pointed out here, Boudin 2 footprint and all. That's the uh, the yellow Boudin in the Caribbean. That was first ahead or whatever leading the way. And then um, Boudin 1, the red Boudin in the Caribbean, was next. And that made the middle region here that I'm circling. So the first one was yellow right here. Then the, uh, the red in the Caribbean. And then the North American Boudin, which is yellow, which um, basically the Yucatan Peninsula, which is here that I'm circling. That was the last one. So you can see that superposition of the material. You can just tell by looking at it. Um, and this whole Boudin movement thing is verified by this fractal on the lower right-hand side that we just saw on the previous slide. You can see um, the Boudins coming off. They got pulled off from the movement of Africa. Then they rotated counterclockwise as shown. And they got dragged also eventually as you see above in the main feature. Okay, Earth images today on Google Earth. This is the Great Lakes area of North America, showing rotational phases based on lineations and water bodies. So the uh, left diagram and the right diagram just show different uh, possibilities of, um, basically it's the, these rotational signatures that I drew in. So they're, um, just different possibilities. You got uh, additional ones on the left. You got 1A and 1B, as well as 1, 2, and 3, which are shown on the right side. So just looking at these text boxes. Squeeze during propagation to the east-northeast with counterclockwise rotation. The Great Lakes mark phases of rotation of the refold from both counterclockwise rotation around the impact zone in Canada and clockwise rotation of Florida towards the Caribbean and subsequent snapping of the refold under tension between Alaska area and New Brunswick, Canada. So um, there's some drag folds here. What I'm highlighting here on the north end, see that? Uh, Counterclockwise rotation of the pendulum-like movement south of the asteroid impact in Canada caused a drag fold here. So up above, we had that pendulum rotation of the asteroid area, which went like that causing that dragging, dragging the fold that way. And um, down here on the other end, there's a, a border to the uh, refold zones in here that I'm showing along the St. Lawrence River and all. Um, that drag fold is likely caused by a tensional release of Alaska area as Florida was pulled toward the Caribbean Sea. So there's like this skin friction resistance here that caused these multiple drag folds in this area. The um, Niagara Falls is right in, in uh, right here where I'm showing. Um, something interesting here said this zone has been pulled into the uh, counterclockwise rotational zone. So you see the lake right here. I guess it's uh, Lake. Um, oh boy, so it's Lake Erie. So it used to be straight, probably like that, and then it got pulled upward like this into this 
rotational zone, counterclockwise rotational zone. But also notice uh, there's a pivot point here. See what I'm circling? All these circles come to a pivot point. That has some significance, significance because what I'm showing here, it's hard to read, but um, to the south and west of the pivot point, there was actually um, early phases of clockwise rotation that kind of pulled everything in this way. And then there was counterclockwise rotation throughout the rest of the history. But all these things have um, been discussed and will be discussed in detail. So in summary, basically this uh, Great Lakes area is a rotational signature zone after the asteroid impact. Uh, it's, it's showing like a history of tectonics as uh, again, we'll see in future slides and we have seen a little bit before. Okay, Earth Today, Pacific Ocean, Continent A footprint. This has been discussed before, so I will not discuss it again, just presenting it here for completion, showing things for the Earth today. Okay, Earth Today, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, Continent A footprint. This has also been discussed uh, in great detail, so I won't talk about it again, just here for completion in the Earth Today section. Okay, here's another slide of Earth Today showing the Eastern North America refold. There's a subdivision and uh, there's this resulting continental drift that I'll discuss here. So um, as you were, uh, as you remember on previous slides, there's first of all about uh, 100 million years ago, Alaska and area snapped off at New Brunswick. Here's New Brunswick here I'm highlighting. So as a result of that tensional release, there's a uh, second action here, the snap back and reverse flow. So that's generally what happened. And there's a whole dynamic there. You know, there's the resulting skin friction along um, the border, as I discussed on the previous slides about, um, uh, you know, showing those drag folds, which are over by Lake Ontario here, you can see. And I'm highlighting now those drag folds. So as a result of those drag folds, you have the uh, features of, I know they're glacial features, but you have the uh, Finger Lakes region, which is you know a result of the dynamics. See the forces here from that um, weak spot that's developed from the drag fold, showing the arrows where everything's going. And um, due to this action, this whole dynamic around Lake Ontario and all, and the whole um, rotational feature to the north and east, in between that, you have the Herkimer Diamonds region. And there's a lot of um, really everything going on there, tension, compression, shearing, rotational forces, and faulting with likely fluid flow. So you get those uh, great diamonds there, probably as a result of all this. So if you follow the border, I'll go through these text boxes now. Um, the Hudson River, check it out on Google Earth or whatever, it increases its flow tremendously in the vicinity of the fault where it's pointing to in this area. Um, there's, uh, there's that continental drift here. So as this, um, these forces, these red arrows go around, it actually pushes off Nova Scotia. You'll see a similar dynamic in a future slide on the last presentation. So this is the border in black showing the uh, original ductal refold arm. The thing that actually snapped back, you know, we'll talk about this subdivision of the Northeast, um, North America refold and all on the Northeast here. So it's also shown above. You can see where I trace it goes through the uh, St. Lawrence River, like I said. Um, there's another uh, thing going on in the um, another counterclockwise rotational zone up in Canada there that I showed. So uh, there's also another little subdivision, Prince Edward Island that I'm highlighting now. There's another rotational zone in there. So uh, you know, interesting things going on right in the uh, around the urban areas of the Northeast. Okay, here's another slide of Earth Today, Eastern North America Refold Subdivision, which goes from like uh, Mexico at the Yucatan Peninsula, where there's a boudin and has developed in the tension zone that I'm circling, uh, up to uh, New Brunswick, Canada. So uh, I'm just gonna read the uh, text boxes and it'll be more clear after I go through that. 
Refill dynamics on the east coast of North America after the tensional release of Alaska area, actually area what is now Bering Strait, uh, which is north of Alaska. Uh, the whole area rotated counterclockwise and outside of what is now Greenland, a large, which is a large boon in Greenland is. The resulting fabric lineation is shown in red and represents a dynamic similar to a snapped rubber band. So that red is like a boot in path that snapped. That's what I labeled here, boot in path, pathway in red snapped. So you can see slack developing where I'm highlighting and uh, over here and over here. And there's reasons for that based on the initial character of the uh, refold itself. In other words, that slack is probably controlled by a weak spot which is the Mississippi River here. And uh, this one is probably controlled by the fact that um, <clears throat> it's just developed because there's a faster pull to the south here, where I'm now highlighting as it starts to uh, go into what's uh, developing as a Budin, which is the Yucatan Peninsula. So it hasn't caught up yet. It's kind of uh, you know waiting to enter the tensional zone to the south because the flow is to the south and all. Okay, in this text box, which is hard to see, I basically am saying that the character, the shape of the outside boundary of the refold, which is in blue, is mimicked by this red snapped uh, Budin path in red. So that's this and this. See, they're very similar. Uh, noting that Alaska area was pulled apart to the northeast about 100 million years ago. We discussed that. Now it's still flat here because of that snapback action. And incidentally, with the snapback action, which goes this way in the area shown, this refold, there's going to be a little bit of a snapback again going that way. And that kind of fosters that continental drift direction, which is counterclockwise and goes in that direction. Sort of makes sense. There's, just, you know, it's a whole um, rebounding kind of effect. So I uh, wrote here, drag folds likely caused by a tremendous release of Alaska area as Florida was pulled toward the Caribbean Sea about 100 million years ago. So yeah, I talked about this. These are like skin frictional uh, drag folds here that, you know, because things were sticking at different different magnitudes and all that. So it developed as a drag fold from the sticking, skin friction sticking. Uh, outline of refold is shown in blue. I talked about that. Compression zones are likely present between Florida and the Mid-Atlantic in a manner similar to the refold in New York that's shown right here. So when uh, I mapped this refold in New York and I did the initial uh, video in 2019, I talked about this. There's compression zones in here. I mapped it out fairly detailed. And this, of course, is mimicking the large scale actual subdivided refold in, uh, you know, the one that goes from New Brunswick, Canada to Yucatan Peninsula. So uh, I also saw on a rock outcrop a drag fold and where this drag fold was located in the structure is where it's, uh, the red arrow is shown, which makes sense that it would be there. Uh, incidentally, I just showed the uh, drag fold that we discussed previously here in Lake Superior due to the pendulum-like rotation of the uh, area south of the impact and the rotational signature of Great Lakes this year, which is, has generally been counterclockwise. Okay, on this slide, um, again, it's uh, Earth Today showing a detail of the uh, Eastern North America refold subdivision. The previous slide is shown on the insert here, a reference. So um, this SC structure that I'm circling here in Tennessee, right in the heart of Tennessee, that is about, um, if you look at the insert, it's about right here. So anyway, there's a reason that uh, there's this um, showing the shear sense as um, clockwise. The reason that's like that is because of this snapped boot in pathway over here. So it's coming down this way and uh, develops some slack there and all that. And then it, um, because of the weak zone here, of the Mississippi River that I'm highlighting, it develops some slack up this way, so it's pushing up that way. So you can see why that uh, shear sense developed, and it's just strong proof, as I write here, this SC structure in Tennessee, USA, confirms boot in path and red snapped between Alaska area and New Brunswick, Canada.
just strengthening that. Okay, another slide here of uh, Earth Today, Eastern North America Refold Subdivision, another detail. So we just talked about this one, then I'm circling this SC structure here. <clears throat> and uh, you can see it on the insert here. Now, there's a new one. This is in Oklahoma. The western side moved faster than the eastern side. So uh, I'm saying this side moved faster than this side. So you get the shearing development. And um, this is, uh, you know, see this faster side here that I'm checking. That's uh, also expressed in um, Big Bend on the Rio Grande. That whole zone of the uh, North America refold moves, moves faster than the this side that I'm checking. So um, showing the uh, large scale structure, well, the subdivision anyway, right here in the insert. And uh, what you'll notice is the uh, character of the blue outline, Eastern North America refold boundary in blue, is uh, kind of mimics the two mimic each other, the um, snapped refold lineation in red and the blue line. So you can really see that in uh, this area where I'm highlighting now. You can see that over here, for example. And again, those drag folds that I discussed in the Niagara Falls area along uh, the uh, St. Lawrence River area. That also is another example. Okay, here's another uh, Earth Today slide, New York City, severe earthquake evidence. So this is the JFK Airport area. See on the insert, um, that's the JFK Airport. And uh, JFK Airport is on the northeast end of uh, what I'm circling now of the featured slide here, featured image. Um, so basically there's a, a weak formation in purple that liquefied during a tremendous earthquake probably in the order of hundreds or thousands of years ago, uh, not millions, you know. So the barrier island, actually, if you look at Google Earth, you can see much greater than this area. You see the barrier island is all busted up, but this is the heart of it. This is where the most displacement is. I'm going to circle the area, what I'm talking about here. See, it's been color coded and uh, the uh, liquefied material accumulated here and pushed out and caused the barrier island to rotate this way. So the whole segment from like here over rotated. And the reason it's, uh, it's disconnected here in green is because it basically, the rotation was so severe that it, you know, pushed up like that and it came down over here, sort of like a seesaw action. Um, I put, um, there's three subdivisions to this, um, catastrophic slide, this liquefaction slide here, number one, number two, and number three. So apparently this thing propagated back and it's controlled by the weak formation in purple. So I uh, also showed all the drainage in the uh, upper insert here and on the main featured insert. So with the drainage, you can get some insight that this is in fact, you know, a very weak zone. Uh, and, uh, you know, for example, the uh, intersections of the streams, if you look at the insert, are here and here. And um, everything's draining into the area. So it's evident that, uh, you know, the weak zone follows this weak formation here. So it's just interesting that you don't hear much about this. It's, uh, I guess it's follow the money kind of thing. Okay, here's another slide of Earth Today. Plan view drawing of all seven refold structures. That's referring to where I'm putting the check now. Uh, there's some supplemental um, inserts that uh, help in the discussion. So let me have to, I have to read, unfortunately, I have to read these text boxes because what you see today is a function of what happened before. So to further enforce and clarify, I'll go through all these steps. So reading this text box. After 550 million years ago, the refolds are more independent from the main chain dynamic after experiencing severe derailment. They move individually as they are drawn to the spin axis at the inner earth through axis points of damaged oceanic crust below. This damaged oceanic crust is located in the general vicinity above the anchor suture zone 
and is directly related to the anchor suture itself. The strain of the twisting single suture angle of the Southeast Asia refold arm and to a lesser extent, the motion of the asteroid impact directly then control individual refold movements as they rotate counterclockwise, with the exception of the strained Southeast Asia refold, or move laterally to the right and are drawn toward the access zones to the anchor suture zone as explained herein. The single suture anchor becomes rotated, stretched, and quite strained. As the refolds are drawn to the access points of the strained Southeast Asia refold anchor at the inner earth, three of them actually develop arms that gravitate to the access zones to the anchor. When the Southeast Asia refold moves suddenly due to movement of the arm of the Africa refold, it causes further brittle failure of the oceanic crust below at the following locations. One, at the upper zone of the single strain single anchor, which it drags further from the deep anchor. And two, at the primary zone located under the Africa mobile refold arm. This primary zone was initially developed by the rapid clockwise movement of the Southeast Asia refold as shown here. With sudden Africa arm movement, the adjacent refolds are then drawn more readily and strongly to these two related access zones to the deep suture zone anchor. The oceanic crust below the primary zone was significantly destroyed when the arm of the Africa refold reached out quickly to cradle the Russia refold in an attempt to stabilize the refolds in the area at approximately 105 to 110 million years ago. Interestingly enough, this was a way to guarantee joining the refolds stabilizing them to some degree and healing the wound at the damaged oceanic crust below. The arm of the Africa refold had its initial impact near the top of the ductal anchor located at the upper arm zone of the Southeast Asia refold at another zone of likely damaged oceanic crust that was located just south of the Earth's main axis at approximately 4 to 20 to 4 to 30 million years ago. You'll see these in the diagrams. The arm then bulldozed or at least damaged areas of oceanic crust below below the refolds as this arm rotated the Southeast Asia refold clockwise and eventually grabbed and cradled the Russia refold as the Russia refold skated quickly above the oceanic crust. Today, the Africa refold arm has cradled the Russia refold. The ductal refolds are pulling towards the center of the pole suction axis zone as evidenced by their shapes and movements. Today, the Mariana Trench may be another access point to another damaged oceanic crust zone due to the movement of the strained anchor which connects to the northern, once southern, uh, prior to clockwise rotation uh, arm of the Southeast Asia refold. This dynamic of more independent refolds that move individually to the Earth's spin axis coincides with the Cambrian explosion of life. Okay, so looking at this uh, diagram, Southeast Asia anchor connects to this arm. So this is now the uh, northern arm after things rotated. So it goes like this to the uh, to the equatorial spin axis. You can see boot in development from the extension, boot in development in the arm of the Africa refold. Uh, I just showed the 35 million year old diagram below to compare uh, how the uh, Africa arm is embracing the the uh, Russia refold. Here is the uh, Africa arm here and the Russia refold is here. So you're gonna compare, see above the uh, Africa arms here, Russia refold here. So basically it, um, it is pulled in at this point. And by pulling in, there's probably a recent um, counterclockwise rotation of the Southeast Asia refold. Because as it comes in, it pulls, see this interface here, it pulls that with it it's pulling it in this direction. I'm also showing um, in this uh, image above here, this is two gravity anomalies that coincide with these locations here. And they've kind of been um, discussed a bit in that first text box to the left. Uh, not directly, but um, how they are caused has been discussed. And uh, you can see here, let's see, path to, of India to damaged oceanic crust zone in dark blue. Really looks like it's black, but it's right here. It's going into that arm of Africa. Path of continent A to damaged oceanic crust at anchor zone and anchor zone below in red. So here's continent A, and it's gonna go through the uh, Mariana Trench, which is right here, toward eventually, at least whether it made or not, it's gonna go towards the uh, 
actual anchor point at the equatorial spin axis deep below. The uh, red ellipses are zones of attraction. I was discussing there's basically two of them. There's one here and there's one here. Uh, the Southeast Asia anchor in pink connects from this arm to the inner earth at the equatorial spin axis. I talked about that. So back up to these text boxes on the right. Uh, Earth's refold structures today. Continent A has already disappeared into the Mariana Trench and the arm of another refold, India, has already slammed into the arm of Africa. The refold chain had previously derailed off the equatorial rotational axis track. The individual refolds, on, refolds are moving toward the damaged oceanic crust access zones to the anchor zone at the inner Earth. The ultimate goal is to get to that anchor zone at the equatorial spin axis. But through the access points, it'll uh, this is where it starts. Damaged oceanic crust access zones to the anchor at the inner Earth were caused from the following. One, the sudden clockwise rotation of the Southeast Asia refold at its anchor um, 550 plus million years ago, this fractal is uh, 670 to 550, so a little older than 550, um, as seen in the fractal below. The anchor connects from the inner earth at the equatorial spin axis to the south southeast arm. So here's the uh, Southeast Asia refold it's pointing to, and it's connected right here on the right side right now. Later it'll spin cross over, it'll spin clockwise, cross over the uh, equatorial spin axis and end up on this side. Two, the counterclockwise rotation of the Southeast Asia refold beginning about 420 million years ago after the arm of Africa refold struck, causing the anchor to, to damage oceanic crust. The arm formed off the middle reaches on the open end of the Africa refold. So eventually that arm of Africa, if you look at this uh, insert here, here's Africa, this arm is going to go up that way and rotate Southeast Asia clockwise. Okay, three, the arm of Africa reaching out relatively quickly to recatch, remember it went before and the Southeast Asia refold caught it, but this time it's the Africa arm's turn, to recatch the Russia refold around 100, 500, 100 million years ago and retrieved it around 100 million years ago. The movement caused the Southeast Asia refold anchor to rotate and further damage oceanic crust. Then there's the whole thing with greater Adria that probably didn't help. So there's more uh, damaged brittle crust basically. Four, the North America refold rotating counterclockwise quickly at 475 to 500 million years ago and exposing and further damaging the already damaged oceanic crust that was damaged after the clockwise rotation of the Southeast Asia refold at 550 plus million years ago, as you see in that upper um, Nova Scotia fractal. The fractal to the right is 105 to 110 million years old, and the, the one below right here is 475 to 500 million years ago. Okay, I kind of discussed this uh, a minute ago, but a few minutes ago. The Southeast Asia refold has rotated clockwise initially 550 plus million years ago, and then from the contact with the Africa refold arm at about 420 million years ago. <clears throat> As seen in the location of the India landmass below and the Southeast Asia landmass, the Southeast Asia refold has either continued to rotate clockwise after the India impact or has more likely shifted southward toward the anchor point at the equatorial spin axis. As the Africa refold arm cradled the Russia refold. So you got to compare the 35 million years ago um, diagram here that I'm checking and what we have today, which is uh, above that. So again, that style of grasping the uh, Russia refold has changed. Now it's, um, as you look at the uh, upper diagram, it's more like this. So I think that um, that anchor has relaxed a little and I'm drawing an arrow where, which way it's going. It has apparently moved in in recent times. Sort of performing a balancing act <laughs> with the Russia refold, that whole system here. Okay, another slide of Earth today, the final slide. Canada and the United States ductile structures. Everything shown on here is a ductile structure, whether it's the SC structures, that shows shear sense, 
or the boudins, the ductal structures. Um, I showed only um, for some folds, several folds, I showed it red. I just showed the center line to avoid uh, cluttering up the diagram too much uh, more than it already is. Uh, so let's go through the uh, text boxes now and it'll become more clear what's going on. Right here, the first one, a pendulum-like movement from the impact in Hudson Bay is evident and that there is compression to the south and east of the site and tension boot and source to the west of the impact site. So here's your um, circling the impact site. That's critical to at least go over right now. All right, next text box. Boudins formed after North America refold, wrapped around the impact site and formed in the radial tension zone in the western half of the impact zone. The boudin pulling is accelerated in the direction of the red line around the impact site at the Hudson Bay, the red line that I drew in. There is even compression of the boudins in the upper reaches of the red line pathway as the red line pathway pulls the leading boudin through a discrete zone. That's key, this discrete zone here. So you can see these ductal structures, the boudins. If you follow this red line where I'm highlighting now, I'm not going to follow it all the way through, but uh, it actually pulls one of the boudins, which are generally on the west side, because that's the tension zone, this um, pulling here by this pendulum-like motion. Um, that's the tension zone, but one of them is pulled through the discrete zone. And actually there's this sort of like a flow path that uh, terminates here, at least on the land, and it caused like a continental drift thing. This is similar to um, what I was describing on the, the Northeast subdivided refold from uh, around the Nova Scotia area where, um, well, Nova Scotia was drifted off by the same kind of thing going on where there's like this force that pushes, that drives the continental drift. So you can see these SC structures in blue and um, you'll see the shear sense. So what's going on is uh, if you look at this um, fold here, this is compressed from the impact going this way. So it folded that way and then eventually went this way from the pendulum-like rotation and it separated closer to the source of the pendulum rotation, which is again this thing I circled before. So that's why it's uh, moved about and uh, the action is defined by that SC structure. So um, it's like a drag fold as I labeled here drag fold that um, dragged it out off of uh, connecting with this one. So um, there's also, I think, from the impact that I talked about in this direction that I'm showing again, that uh, there's this SC structure here that I'm circling that um, pulled this fold more this way. See the shear sense? You can see how this fold was further to the north and east, and it got dragged down <clears throat> as per this uh, direction of the blue arrow here. You could also see um, there's more of a, a drag fold rotation here where I'm uh, now, see I'm circling in the red. I wrote the, um, the arrow in, that's more dragging this way because of this motion here. So everything's adding up. Um, to uh, being affected by this asteroid impact this way, and then the uh, resulting pendulum-like rotation that way. So um, there's another SC structure over here. It's in uh, magenta, and it shows um, a shear sense that um, is going in the direction of the red arrow. So it kind of pulls this... Uh, this fold here in, in blue, it kind of pulls it along in the direction of the um, the red arrow, basically. And even the boot and tip, you see the boot and tip is, the yellow boot and tip is right in that pathway. And then if you look carefully at the uh, this area that I'm checking here of the blue fold, because of the headwinds, it's like curling up. So it's um, going in that direction of the blue arrow and then the headwinds curl it up and it's also being dragged along the uh, direction of the uh, yellow boudin and basically that red line that uh, I'm highlighting now. <clears throat> you also notice that the um, folding is smaller here as opposed to below. It generally gets bigger. It's bigger here and it's bigger at the bottom 
in uh, this area. This was a real big one that got disjointed, as I discussed. I'll talk about this later. This is all related to this whole thing, the um, source area of the Mackenzie Dyke, Dyke Swarm. <clears throat> uh, just addressing these text boxes, Greenland is a huge drifted and broken up Budin because of Budin's on the outside fibers of the uh, rotation zone. Uh, what I wrote here is refold center lines. Compression is likely due to the pendulum-like rotation from the impact. Note the similarity of the folding style and how the size of the folds increases to the south, where the pendulum motion is greater. The area to the south is more complexly folded, although only this fold is shown. Final note here, you'll see the uh, Great Lakes rotational zone is um, also playing into this whole thing, function of it. It's over here.